Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Rand, Jesse and Dodger, what up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you're all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe while we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt. everybody welcome to geek enders episode two with i was chewing i was chewing hey everybody boop, 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 boop. with our boop. good bud kraken as our guest hello buddy hello. that was a solid intro um since i guess everyone knows kraken and there's no reason to <laughs> keep you know Let's get like, that out of the way. We don't need to have an awe about who you are and all of your talented <laughs> goings on. So, you know, let's let's get to the meat. <laughs> no, tell everybody who you are. What do you, what do you do? What's your Hi, vibe? Everybody. Uh, I'm like, I'm kind of like the guy. I'm like the, the guy vibe. I'm like, you know, <laughs> that guy that's like been around for 14 years on the Internet and is still going. Uh, kind of same vibe as everyone else in this in this call. Actually, I think we've all been you know hanging around each other for a very long time. They've known yeah. me probably half of my life, uh, which is kind of wild to think about. Um, oh my god! And uh, you know, yeah, I'm just kind of like your average approachable, funny, kind of quirky guy. Is kind of the vibe <laughs> that I, I put out. So uh, he likes to ride unicycles. Out. Yeah. He, uh... <laughs> I wear ber- I wear berets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A Doesn't even need those glasses. No. I drink coffee out of a nondescript white cup. Um, Not like me, average Joe American, where I spend five dollars on my coffee. Thank you very much. Mine's seven. <laughs> <laughs> I got you beat. Welcome to I LA. Got you beat. Yeah, welcome to LA. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. That sucked. That sucked. I hate that we all drank at the same time. <laughs> I love it. We were I, all well, doing a bit it. about our drinks, so it makes sense that there was then an awkward pause for us each to take a drink. <laughs> I can see it in your eyes how happy you were that we all went like this, and it made me angry. <laughs> I was like, she said, yes, drink mm. up. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. Are you guys, um, when, you know, tis the season for weird kind of sweet drinks, do you guys go for those, or are you like, nah, I've got my drink, and I stick with my drink? I do go for those. I'm a sucker for anything that is new and or time-limited, or guy I'm vibe, just the quirky so. little funny guy. Yeah. So when I when I see, like, oh, a little pumpkin spice, even if I don't like gingerbread, I mean, I like gingerbread, but if, in a, if I don't like something, but they put it in, like, fancy advertising, I'm like, you know, maybe <laughs> yeah. I do like this thing, and I've just not... Giving it a fair shot. I've never liked hazelnut before, but, but maybe it's I will hazelnut this time. with cute little star sprinkles, and maybe now yeah. I'll mm-hmm. love it. <laughs> yeah, I completely there's, get that. There's this weird thing where there's, especially here in LA, everything is holidayized. So it's like you're getting your mocha peppermints, you're getting your, like, all these different things, your white chocolate. Yeah. It's a lot. The thing, for some reason, I'm like, no, nah, no, that's for me. Except. That damn creme brulee latte that Starbucks has. <laughs> that thing is like crack cocaine. It it's it serves good. no purpose. It is not fantastically delicious. But I'm just like, what if I got one though? I don't know. I don't know how to I don't know what I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. But I loves it. I loves it. Also, my gain is apparently very high. 
Uh, what do you want me to do about that? I'm just a microphone man. I, I don't. Can, I can I'm scooch just a voice you down. Microphone guy. I could scooch you down, yeah. but you're you're yeah, popping scoo up just about scoo just the, scooch me, the just same heat. Little... I scooch. I scooch you. Do. You're too slow. That was me tuning myself in. That was really good. That was very. Uh, this sound like this sound like me tuning myself in to the radio. It was very ham radio. I liked it. Thank you, ham. Ra very ham radio. Yeah. John Ham coming soon. It was very. Let me tell you about crop circles. You know. <laughs> oh, cool. That's one of my favorite things to talk about. <laughs> I know it. I is. love how real they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big Alien fan. I know that about you. Huge fan. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you should have Kraken on uh, Chiluminati, not to I would pimp your other podcast, to. but <laughs> I uh, shamelessly want as many friends to be on that show so I can figure out if I can trust them <laughs> with government secrets or not. You can trust me. Because I learned I learned so much about people. I've learned so many friends who are very into like extraterrestrial life or believe heavily in ghosts, and I'm like. I'm going to use this against you in some way one day, and I don't know how, but <laughs> yeah, it's good to know. Did you find out? I, I know you're going to say yes no matter what, but did you find out something you think you can use against me from my episode? You? There's nothing I can use against you. You are like Teflon. <laughs> you, are an, you are a duck, and whatever I sprinkle on your back runs down, and you just kind of like keep quacking. You we keep have too quacking. Much history. <laughs> yeah, I, got no, I can't do anything. I, trust me, I've tried. And I got nothing. <laughs> Sorry, Keaton, what were you gonna say? Oh no, I'm I'm very uh impressionable. If you if you give me a good <laughs> case for aliens existing, I'll I'll believe you. If if you if you're passionate and you believe it, I'll believe you. It might wear off in like two hours whenever I'm like, you know, off doing the next thing. But right. for that for those two hours I'm yours, you know, and I'm and I'm I'm fully in. So yeah, I I'm, you love, I'm down you for any You just love conspiracy. the hype. Yeah, I love the hype. I'm just a little guy. I will say, a funny guy. there's a fun hype in the idea of, uh, even though I'm not like a, obviously the universe is big enough, I have to believe that there's something else out there, right? Obviously. Yeah. But the stuff that people say when they talk about like, well, we've met all, we've met several different types of aliens and that kind of stuff. Really, if you just break it down, the aliens are D&D &D races. I don't care what anyone says. Mm. There's bird people and lizard people. Oh, yeah. There's like tall, like elvish looking people. There's little tiny gray things. There's all it's <laughs> D and D races. And then if you ever, I'm telling you, go spend a day looking at flat earth. I'm not saying to believe it. Just go look. And it is straight up a D and D worlds. It's like bubbles next to each other. And everyone like, if we can go from this uh, ice wall through another, it's D and D. And you know what? I'm, Bless them for living their D&D lives. I'm happy that they've decided, you know what? I'm going to be in an RPG, and I don't care if you believe me or not. I'm here for it. Smart. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. sorry. aliens to humans are just animals like us. You know, we just, like, sized up a lizard, and we're like, that's an alien. Sure. Or we sized up a bird, and we're like, that's probably an alien. I think they're more likely going to be, like, gelatinous or maybe light based a light based alien would be kind of cool mm -hmm. uh maybe a sound based alien so you're really big into into alien waves yeah sound just kind of funny alien like vibes. light waves yeah i think there's a vibe yeah. based alien probably you know yeah. You're more Could like be. the later seasons of stargate sg1 not the first <laughs> couple seasons of stargate uh, yes. sg1 yeah right Okay, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I'm big into cosmic, like, existential dread and horror, so. <laughs> oh, so you want tentacles is what you're saying. You're like. <clears throat> yeah, or just unknowable things, you know? I don't want to know what I'm what I'm terrified of. I just want to be terrified. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, How look at the stars. And think, yeah, think on it a little too hard. Look at the stars. You'll get there. Don't you worry. You'll be right. terrified in no time. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hi. Hey. So let's talk video games. Sure. Let's talk. Let's talk. Or, or, or just like whatever, whatever we're yeah. into right now. Which is aliens, apparently. Because honestly, been doing? kissing aliens. I love a good. You know I actually, I bought a book uh, recently that I'm obsessed with because it's right up my alley. Of, you know, when people talk about 
paranormal things or weird things like that. They're always, to me at least, it's always a cautionary tale. So if you look at like La La Rona or you look at, I'm trying to remember what the name of it is, but it's this like Inuit creature that if you're out on the ice, it'll pull you under the ice, right? Ooh. And to me, all it is, it's just stories for kids to keep them away from thin ice or nice, to keep yeah. them away from water at night, like right. that kind of thing. And so I bought a book and it, I feel uh, shameful now. I'd probably have to go look it up uh, to find it again. I can't remember the name of it. It's something highway, but it's literally um, about uh, all of those stories that are like in the cultural ethos mm. and how they came to be like where the origin is. Very, very cool. Uh, I just got it two hours ago. It showed up at my door. <laughs> so I am very excited to read it. And uh, I want to make that happen. It's it's my next obsessive goal. That that sounds like directly up my alley as well. So let me know how that goes. Oh, book because, club. Oh, I'm, yeah. I, I love mythology. I love like, yeah, mm -hmm. just like, you know, passing down oral traditions and like yep. the way like mythos and, and legend catches on and especially like cryptids and, and like that whole kind of... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I I'm I'm a huge fan for the, of that stuff. So I found the book. Uh, it is called "The Vanishing Hitchhiker: American Urban Legends and Their Meanings." That's Ooh. not something highway at all. The Vanishing. Hitchhiker. Yeah. Well, the reason why <laughs> I said highway, highway is because literally the uh, front cover is like a dude on a lone highway with like a sexy woman in the stars going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's no joke. Because it's supposed expected. to be. The, well, it's the Vanishing Hitchhiker, right? It's supposed to be like the ghost you pick up. But for some reason, oh. the, the cover is a car driving down the road, and then like a ghost woman in the, st in the sky is like, I don't. I wish they were me. You find a yeah. star God, woman on the side me. of the road. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a star woman. Um, Aren't we all? This is vaguely associated, but uh, if you guys haven't seen the clip of Cheddar Gorgeous, who's a drag queen, um, it's a clip for, of Cheddar Gorgeous doing. Uh, celebrity mastermind did you ever watch mastermind They're like you like have a specialist uh, a, a specialty that you establish and you go up and is they this like a british thing and they like quiz you yeah um, oh. no i haven't look i have heard of it i think i may have seen an episode <laughs> once i visit my british cousin it's it's a it's a really interesting show because you have to you have to be like yes i am I, I am a really, really knowledgeable about this hyper specific thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then they time you and you and you just get quizzed on like a bunch of questions. Um, and it's always it's the celebrities always go up there and are like, yeah, this is my specialty. And it's never what you think it's going to be. The Cheddar Gorgeous one is very good. And it's associated with what we were just talking about. So it's cool. amazing. I, I was just amused that. In a sh I'm going to say in a geological short amount of time, you went over to the UK and you become so ingratiated. You're like, have you ever, have you guys ever seen the show Zip Zop? It's amazing. It's one of my favorite shows. And we're like, no, I don't know what that is. They're like, oh, well, it's on at 1 a.m. only in the UK. And it's this incredible show where they bring on guests and the guests do a dance called the Flim Flam. And it's all the rage. You know why this is funny is because... Uh, during the pre-show, before we were ever live with you, the viewer, oh, no. um, we were, uh, I was telling a story about the mug that I have and said that uh, Clark had picked out a mug from the, the Little Miss like series of like weird blob characters. And Jesse was like, that's certainly an English child. And it took me a second to realize like, oh my God, that's an English thing. That's exclusively an English thing. The like Little Miss little mister yeah. thing yeah we don't our, the most blob like characters we have were the teletubbies and they they went out of fashion and isn't that still a british okay. thing or was that australia or new zealand uh or was that the wiggles no you're thinking of the the blue uh no different thing though they're like they're like they they There's same so gumdrop shape and they make weird sounds and they fly around they're like uh god Oh, you're gonna it's, it's it's killing me now. They make their gum boobas. Boobas. It's these boobas. Booba. Yep. Yeah. Oh, 
Ooh, no, I'm all right. No, I'm, I'm good. Come on, Jesse. Do it with me. Ooh, yeah. I had Sesame Street. That's all I needed. I didn't, Booba, Mr. Rogers, Sesame Booba. Street. I didn't need boobas. Yeah, it's there. I think they light up too. Like they light up. Like like a like a Christmas you make light. Make the boobas light up. That's incredible. You make the booba light up. Yeah, it's crazy, man. You got to get on the booba train. <laughs> Lots, so many people. I've been love trying, booba. my dude. It's all I think about some days. It's crazy. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, I was about to say. I already <gasps> forgot it. Did you guys uh, hear the geese just then? What? What? <laughs> what are the, the geese? geese? What are the geese just screamed outside? <laughs> you did it again. Do they ever like walk over to your office and you know? Climb in? Uh, no, because they have to go up a bunch of stairs. But yeah, they, okay. they will stand high. really close huh? to my windows sometimes and just honk yeah. loudly. You know we are in there. Come out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Feed us now, human. <clears throat> honk. Oh, I imagine they're like Skeksis. Right? And they sure. all like waddle around, well, but they yeah. also sound like, like yes. Feed yes. us the human will. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Obviously. It's just like that. Yeah. All right. So, hey, what have you guys been doing this week? What's what? What you been playing? What you been doing? What you been reading? What you been living? What you been watching? Go, Kraken. I watched a little thing called the Game Awards yesterday, and guess what? what? I saw on it, I saw my good buddy Jesse on it. He was in the crowd, and he looked so nice. And I said, Jesse, and I yelled. <laughs> And I was like, I know him. And uh, yeah, you you killed it. Uh, sitting, I, you know, I put in so much work. So yeah. you know, I'm you glad looked, the show really. You looked very nice. You looked like you were having a good time. You did look nice. Yeah. Um, I was having a great time. It, I I honestly, if you want the breakdown, I'll give you the behind the scenes of the of the game awards. Yeah, let's hear it. Um, so uh, obviously, I got to go on a lovely date. With my dear friend Ben Starr, who is Clive from Final Fantasy 16. You guys And uh, also an incredible That's actor just in his general life. Um, and so I know that he always wears like a shirt underneath. Like he had a Final Fantasy 8 one. And he wears... So I was like, all right, I got to come with the shirt game. So we literally custom made the crappiest soaking t shirt I could come up with. That just says, do you know Lahi in like the worst text? It's amazing. That was it's a Photoshop great. done in office. Mwah. So I was like, all right, this is going to be great. I roll up. I find Ben and I realize, hey, everyone, I'm no celebrity. And I'll never be a celebrity because I got to see how celebrities do it at award shows. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, but it's mean? also not glamorous. It's very weird. So they had all like. I was in line with, so first off, the guy behind me in line, Walton Goggins, which was amazing. And if you're like, Jesse, did you talk to your favorite character actor? Why, yes, I did. And the best part was, it's because we got stuck at security. <laughs> and security was like, I guess if you are receiving an award or giving an award or something, you have to have a pin that's like a TGA pin, like a special pin. And they like came to grab me like, do you have a pin? Because I my pin was the flag from Final Fantasy 16, and so they were like, "Yo, do you have a pin? Do you, do you like you can't go in if you don't have a pin?" I was like, I, "I'm not. I'm just sitting in the crowd. I'm not doing anything." They're like, "Oh, well, you know, you're the plus one of Ben." So like, do you, I was like, "I don't know. I'm just, I'm just here, man. I'm just along for the ride." And Walton Goggins was like, "Me too, brother." And I was like, "Oh!" And then we started talking, and I was like, "It was great." Uh, and then. Hey, guess who was in front of me in line? Matthew McConaughey and his entire family. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? All right, all right, all yes. right. All right, all right. Like, all right. him, I assume, like, 12 publicists, and then a bunch of young kids that looked like Matthew McConaughey, so I have to assume it was a family. <laughs> Little McConaughey. Like, they all were, yeah. they all were like, tall boys with blonde flowing hair, and I was like, yeah, those are McConaughey's right there. Yeah. Um, And... They're like he strawberries. Was, yeah. And like, uh, you know, we did like it like, so, you know, but I, I there's no way I was going to be like, well, we got it. Oh my gosh. Are you bet? All right. All right. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, the crazy thing was though, out of all the people there, you know, Dukes, we, I guess all three of us, technically, we know the Larian guys. Mm -hmm. um, and so talking with them was easy. Talking with the team from Alan Wake was easy. Cyberpunk, like I, I just, I guess I've been here a long time. 
any Japanese dev, though, I was like, <laughs> oh, damn, you made Legend of Zelda, bro. Like, I'm just, like, it's that kind of thing where I was just, like, in awe and felt, I was like, oh, no. Is this because, like, I grew, like, this is what I grew up with? So, to me, you're even, like, a higher, like, you are above right. McConaughey. Right. <laughs> like, the Nintendo team, I'm like, oh. yeah, it was wild. <laughs> it was wild. Um, and also, we were there in line with uh, Phil Spencer, Todd Howard, all of them, and they kept giving me looks, and I couldn't tell if that was a who is this guy look, or we saw the videos where you shit in our stuff. <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't tell. I said nothing. I was like, yeah. Um, and so, but, like, well, everyone at home was watching the intros and, and uh, the, like, trailers and stuff for the first hour. I was following Ben through a back lot in a garage where we had to go through like multiple security levels. We had to get a neck thing. We had to get a pin. We had to get a pass. They do all these things. We're going through. And then we had to go stand in a line um, to get in to the red carpet. And so the line was, they kept filtering people out, I guess, because if you're cool and important, you get to go earlier. And so, oh, yeah. like, the entire cast of Fallout, we watched them get, like, selected out of the line and, like, rushed to the front. And so, eventually, it was, like, myself and Ben and then, uh, like, the crit roll team. And so, we were talking with – yeah, it was crazy. And I think the last time, at least for Dodge and I, we saw Matt Mercer just, like, chilling was – yeah. Backstage at some event eating a subway soap. <laughs> like I that's such a vivid six memory years ago. for me too. <laughs> yeah. We just walked back there and we were like, oh Matt, what's up? And he got up and gave us a hug and then yeah. we went back to eat a sandwich. What a nice guy. Same guy. Anyways. Same dude. <laughs> yeah, we were talking the entire time and just like chilling. And then we finally get inside and there's like another line to go to the red carpet to get your photo taken. Bless, bless Ben, bless everyone. Um it's it, like a uh, historian Neil was in there with us and we were just like goofing and being silly, but just straight up, just I've never, I don't do red. Look at me. I'm no red carpet boy. And like getting in there was so ridiculous. We rolled up to the show at exactly start. Right. Like we got to our seat and it was like, and now it's time for the awards. And we were like, okay. <laughs> Doomed. Yeah. How long, and so how long it, did the whole thing take? The f getting, Just, so we yeah. got in line to to go, th like, we went to a parking garage, got in line to do a thing. That took a full hour to just, like, do all the things. Yeah, I was so worried I was going to be just, like, a gross mess because we're in a parking garage in L.A. And I'm like, don't be a gross mess, Jesse. Just be good. And then we rolled in. And, uh, I mean, other than that, like, here's here's all I know about the show. One. There was always six cameramen in front of me, so we could see one half of the stage at all times. We were we were we were very close. Where I thought, like, that's awesome. This would be great. No, there's camera equipment in front of us the entire time. There are people running around the backstage of the award show. Like, what goes on that's not on stage? Wild. Um, they would constantly move people. So if they needed a perfect shot, where it was a great example is the Todd Howard shot where they're in front of me. Um, they were moved there purposefully. So they could get a better angle on them when they did the bit for the thing on stage. And then when that was done, move them back to their normal seat. Like that kind of thing. That's wild. So very, yeah, like very, uh, like a lot of money clearly went to this production. Like a yeah. lot. And um, there was, you know, like uh, robot cameras. There was this one camera on the ground that just roboted around. I was like, dude, the future is here. <laughs> um <laughs> And then, for the most part, uh, my experience was being a fat dude in a tiny seat. So I was constantly trying to make sure that I wasn't either bumping into Ben or bumping this poor woman who was next to me. I was like, all right, I got to like, okay, got it, right? So that was most of my experience. I'm sure there were things happening on the stage, and I'm sure it was lovely, <laughs> but that was most of my experience. And then... Um, then I lost my mind when I got to see Old Gods of Asgard live. So, like, that was that was the best part for me. Everything else, nice. I'm not sure what really happened, but that was the best part. I was like, yeah, yeah, great, <laughs> awesome, man. Yeah, yeah. It, it it looked like a lot of fun. I'm glad that you had uh, 
that up close and personal experience of the whole thing. Yeah, I'll probably, I think like most streamers, I'll probably never be back there again because I got to like do the stream of the Game Awards. You know, there was a lot of times where, where Ben and I were having like a thing would pop up and we'd be like a great, great example. You know, Ben isn't like plugged into the Internet. So when it came to best streamer, I had He's to be like chronically online. Is that what you mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. what the so it's like, wrong with him. <laughs> best streamer pops up, and I'm like, "Yo, Iron Mouse is gonna win this." And he's like, "Who's Iron Mouse?" And I was like, "My dude, you don't know who Iron Mouse is. The world knows who that." And he's like, it, "You have to really? like, explain VTubing in like the matter of thirty <laughs> yeah, seconds before it's say, announced." Did you have yeah. to explain what VTubing was first? So what ended up happening is uh, I said, "Oh, Iron Mouse is this VTuber." Then Iron Mouse shows up on screen. And he looked at me and he was like, so it's, it's a person. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's like anime kind of. And he's like, I, I mean, I get why the internet loves it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, so how does it work? I'm like, bro, you're asking the wrong. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, we, I don't get it. I don't understand it. But I know it's technical as hell. So we were talking about that on during the broadcast too, like the amount of people both in the audience and like the average, you know, COD playing, you know, gamer that only knows the game awards through like the AAA route. Yeah. Like having this this like cute little anime girl come up on screen and be like, Thank you so much for the award. They're like, What is going what on? What is like happening? This, yeah. This just Honestly, blew their mind. If you were in the crowd, that was straight up the reaction. Yeah, there yeah. were a lot of people clearly in like who were fans there who were cheering, but most people, it was clearly the first time they'd ever seen anything like this. Yeah, which I loved because people yeah, there cool. was a bunch of dudes behind us and they were trying to explain it to each other. Like I don't even know how this is. Like people watch this, bro. And this one guy was like, "Let me tell you, man. More people watch this than anything we've ever done." <laughs> I was like, <laughs> "Okay, hey, yeah, what the heck? People watching this." This hey, colorful anime thing? Hello. No way. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I don't want talking in my movies, just the pictures. Yeah, so while while uh, Iron Mouse was giving the acceptance speech, I was sitting there explaining to Ben the entire time. It's like, yeah, so there's I would say millions, millions of VTubers. And it's this new, it's this new thing that, you know, people are using for all sorts of different reasons. And it, you know, they get to have fun and be a character and do things. And he's like, Sounds awesome. I was like, it is. It clearly is awesome. You know, it's one of the most popular. Like, they just, they just won. So yeah, that's very cute. I'm glad that you got. But to also, that was a that was an easy call. Someone. Yeah. Oh yeah. That was an easy call. Also, Faker was an easy call. I did the whole like, <laughs> come on, it's gonna be Faker. And Faker won. He's like, mm -hmm. it's great. I love feeling like I know things mm -hmm. and can impress friends without actually having any knowledge. It's one of my favorite things in the world. You know what you should do next year? I know this is a long ways away because this literally just happened. But next year, mm -hmm. <laughs> you should um, have a prediction sheet and a bingo card all on one page. And you should bring it with you. <laughs> so first off, two things. One, I yes. did a video that was my predictions. And for the most part, I was correct. I was pretty good. Uh, I think like two or three. I Again, shout out. If you haven't played Terra Nil. God, I love that game. I still haven't uh, played Shame Terra it didn't Nil, win. Though. It is up your alley. It's such a good game. Um, but yeah, most of them I nailed. And bingo sheets. I saw a bunch of bingo sheets. People kept asking me. I helped a bunch of people. I had a t-shirt under a suit jacket and jeans on. <laughs> and another one of the bingo things was soaking. So I got two. I helped people get two. So you're welcome, everyone. Doing your duty. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That really helped. Amazing. So yeah, that was me kind of too. <laughs> What's what you been doing, Dodger? Um, <clears throat> the only the only Game Awards thing that uh, I'm associated with at all is that uh, I woke up to a bunch of messages from people telling me that there is that a new Golden Idol game was announced, and I immediately wish listed it. So I was very excited about that. And if Do you haven't have played over? the Golden Idol, you should. Do we want to go over game. the announcements that happened at the Game Awards? Sure. I mean, I don't know if you have like a list. There was a lot. I can I'm going to try and find can, one right now. Yeah, yeah, you try to find one. That sounds like a great idea. Yeah, there, there were a few games I think you'd like to, <laughs> Dodger. Um, thanks, thanks, Dukes. You're welcome. 
so yeah, it was a it was a good it was a good year. I I did remember thinking I wish there was more time spent on the wards themselves and like celebrating the devs a bit more. This was like the first year where it felt mostly well, it announcement slash advertisement heavy. It but. was combined with E three this year, right? Kind of. Right. So I mean, I think a, it's been moving that direction anyway. Combo. Yeah, yeah. It it just there was only like a few that went on stage and gave a speech and they were like kind of sped up compared to like a lot that were just kind of given like a quick splash screen of yay you won and then people clapped and then went to the next one. Mm. And I was like that mm. was that was the vibe in the crowd too. A lot yeah. of people were I mean after a while like at the beginning everyone's like yeah but when they started just rapidly listing off awards yeah and they're like these people won. Too. Yeah um a lot of people were like what? Hold up. Wait, what? A great example is um, the people who were in front of us when they weren't Todd Howard, <laughs> the people who were normally in front of us, they were like, how is it they have the best music or whatever it was, but they don't, they have an orchestra, but they're not playing that. You know what I mean? Like yeah, they have like all the these nominees for best music, but that's like not there. Instead, they're playing music for the best games. And they're like, well, that doesn't make any... Like, why would you do it for best games and not the scores of games? Like, that kind of thing. Mm. And and you can definitely tell people are like, they're making weird choices in what awards to show and what not to show. But Interesting. It's all Jeff's show, and I guess, welcome to the Jeff future. Because yeah, I'm, I'm a, that man is everything in gaming now. Right. I'm seeing a lot of people saying that uh, it was disappointing how little time most people were given to, like, speak after they got an award. <clears throat> yeah, I, I uh, we were yeah. hoping we were in the crowd cheering because we were hoping that Neil would go long as they tried to play yeah. him off. I was like, <laughs> keep going, Neil. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> I mean, yeah. they did it as a bit and it, like it. It was a funny bit for that one segment, but then it became a theme for the whole thing, and I was like, "Oh, okay, well, yeah, I don't know." But it, I mean, yeah, they were like, "You kind of me wrong." Uh, we could see. Uh, by the way, technology again, yes. amazing. Whenever they're coming around with a camera <clears throat> and they like put it on you, uh, unless they're they're like shadow getting us during the Final Fantasy thing where they like blinded poor Ben. Um, <laughs> everything else. They would put a camera in your direction and you would see the teleprompter in the screen and a countdown of like, you may be on screen in five, four, and sometimes you were, and sometimes I was like, This is is this what the Emmys is like? Because this is high tech. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. And so but it was very clearly they were they were trying to run it a certain way mm. and get in the ads and the different things they had to get in. And uh, you know, again, it's it's Jeff's show, he can do whatever he wants, but yeah, I imagine it's much more fun to watch as a casual fan because you get to see the ads and stuff right. versus mm -hmm. what it actually is because it's barely an award show. Yeah. <clears throat> I felt like it. Mm. Who knows? Maybe they'll take that feedback for the future, but it did feel Never like... Never happening. <laughs> <laughs> Never. I promise you, the reason why is because every year it does better and better, and every yeah. year they do less and less awards. Right. Oh yeah, and more I, more the, the feedback. I, it definitely yeah. felt like a real, a real money machine at this point. So I, I think mm -hmm. you're right, but um, yeah, who knows? Um, yeah, it just make another hour. It it went on longer than it did previous year. At least uh, I, I think it fe it felt longer. I don't know if it was, but it, it certainly oh, really? felt like it. Um, just because there were so many like. <clears throat> Hi, everyone. You know how in... Hi, thank you. Hi. You know how in the incredible film Demolition Man, the, the saga of all sagas, where you have to send a maniac to catch a maniac in a distant future that is becoming very close, actually. Um, in that film, there's a thing called the Fast Food Wars. And the Fast Food Wars end with uh, Taco Bell winning, or if you're in the UK, I believe it was Pizza Hut. Either way... There was only one food chain in the end. Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. Which, as you know, is the first sign of uh, Demolition Man. Here's the thing. I'm convinced in five years, all games are going to be Fortnite. Everything will be Fortnite. Mm. <laughs> Fortnite will have won. And, and last night was a perfect example. There was like, do you like Rocket League? It's in Fortnite. Do you like Legos? It's in Fortnite. Do you like concerts? They're in Fortnite. 
<laughs> do you need a girlfriend? Fortnite. Like, everything is Fortnite now. I don't know why I didn't make the rules, yeah. but Epic Epic has more money than anyone in the world, apparently, except for the Hoyoverse, which, by the way, again, another great example of watching dudes in business suits try to explain to each other what the Hoyoverse is. Yo-ho, whatever it is. Um, oh, yeah. And all the anime girls. There's one shot. Dude, there's one. Oh, my God. There's one shot of a trailer where at the end, I'm not sure which game this was, it literally just pans up to like a like an anime girl's boobs for like a little too long and then makes an announcement of like, I'm Kitsumori Shadow Star. And I yeah, guess I we're supposed to know who that is. But everyone in the crowd was just like, <clears throat> why were they showing them boobs for so long? <laughs> and I was like, anime, baby. Yeah. I remember that shot. She was like, I'm a galactic ranger, but it was like yes. <laughs> while they were just showing her tits the whole time. I'm a galactic ranger. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 sure. Yep. I don't know. I found a list. I found oh, a list of great. games. Fantastic. All right, here we go. Yes. The one that I think made the crowd lose their mind the most, obviously, was Monster Hunter Wilds. Yeah, that makes sense. That one, that people went crazy. When it was on screen, they first started showing it, and it was just the dude running from wildebeest buffalo yeah. monsters whatever yeah. it was everyone in the crowd was like is this monster Hunter? guys this is monster, is this monster yeah, Hunter? Yeah. even dudes who were like 65 plus were like Yo, is this monster hunter everyone was losing their mind <laughs> yeah you i was tell like let's way. go mm -hmm. yeah people were very excited and uh yeah so that looked incredible it's not coming out for another year and a half so <laughs> it could be anything by the time it comes out but I don't know. Thoughts? Did you guys? Did it blow you away? Yeah, I, I was excited. I mean, I, I'm a Monster Hunter fan. I think I obviously our mutual friend uh, Sam Strippin is a ma massive Monster Hunter fan. So I'm, yes. I can only imagine him losing his mind. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I expect it to be good. It, look, it looks kind of like they're going open world. Uh, the vibe I got was like they're trying to go more explore and yes. find these monsters in their natural habitat rather than like I go out and hunt one thing and then come back. It's less like instance based. Yeah. Yeah. Which I think is a cool energy that feels more wild. I think, the name. I think that's the right direction to go into to have yeah. it feel more like a, a long running adventure kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, the last time that I really enjoyed a monster hunter game was monster hunter. Try. And I've tried, mm. um, <laughs> I've tried, monster hunters since then and they haven't really grabbed me but mm -hmm. if it's if it if it does feel more like if it does feel less like uh, i'm queuing up a monster <laughs> you know and more i'm going out on an adventure to find the monster that i want right. uh that might that might feel like different in a good way mm -hmm. i think so too especially um i i think people were saying the announcement they didn't say it was coming to the switch which is interesting and would yeah. be nice if true that maybe they're not going to be shackled by that uh, old piece of hardware anymore. Uh, or there's something new coming out. Who knows? I don't know. Um, but maybe that was in my mind too. I'm not sure. Maybe it's just thick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking up. I'm looking yeah. up stuff. When um, did the Nintendo switch come out? Old. Old. Old? It's old. old. It came out old. Yeah. Uh, uh, March 3rd, 2017. So, yeah, it's pretty, I mean, in the scope of, of mm. hardware. Yeah, seven years. It's getting up there. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, I remember standing in line to get one at night. That's crazy. The uh, yeah. Pony Island 2 announcement got me really excited. That well, music of Jesse. well, well. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, you know what? Dan, big fan. Upset that he's now incredibly successful and will never make a game with me. But, like, whatever. <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, I love, I love all Daniel Mullen's games. I love weird games. I'm very excited. Yeah. I'm, for people who know, obsessed with Pony Island. The first game is one of my favorite games. And I'm obsessed to the point where I still have in this office. 
the Diablo 3 Collector's Edition uh, USB drive that has the full copy of Pony Island, which, you know, there's no reason behind that. Don't worry, go play Pony Island 1. No, of course not. You the full, it. <laughs> mm -hmm. The full copy, just dragged from my game, is on that drive. And she'll forever be there. It is, it's literally right over there in a place of honor. But yeah, you should play the game. Don't worry about it. Your computer's totally fine. Uh, don't stress. <laughs> yes, I agree. This is the yeah. truth. It's a totally normal game about ponies. What do you mean? No, I'm I'm excited to see what I saw. I saw it after the fact because I was in line at the time, so I didn't see it in the in the theater. But it looks exactly like the kind of game I want. I'm curious what the crossover will be between the people who loved Inscription because that's the one that blew up, right? Right. But I think it blew up for the Inscription first third of the game rather than the last two thirds. So I'm curious what. Agreed the audience will love if they'll come back in the same amount for something totally different. Yeah, I, I have no clue. Part of Inscription's charm too, though, was how it kept changing up the rules and the genre mm -hmm. through the narrative. And I think that's also Pony Island's vibe. So, or at least it, it, that's how it came across in the trailer was very much this multimedia kind of chaotic hodgepodge right. game that is constantly changing the rules while you're playing. And I think that's a nice way of framing uh, that story. And it's like the right, you know, yeah, I, I think the mm -hmm. fans will, will probably go along with it for that reason. Have but. you played um, the hex? No, I have. Oh, I, I get, so all, all like the hex is a very different beast as well. Like all of his games, are different in ways that are fun and unique, but like also oh, some of them it. nail it. And some like the hex is basically if a bunch of video game characters hung out at a bar and yeah. at night someone's gonna get killed, right? Yeah, and so you get to see the now. backstory of these characters, and it's great, but some of the things he does, I don't know how like what the shelf life of them is. So uh -huh. minor spoilers for something that he does often in his games. He will use either your own desktop or steam as a thing to mess with you. And since yeah. steam updated, I don't know how that works anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if, if you went back in and then changed stuff mm -hmm. or it, because the updates. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm incredibly eager to see what, this one's twist is going to be because you know if it's pony island i kind of get the vibe but i don't know what the like how's he going to mess with us and that's what i'm here for i hope i'm not putting m night Shyamalan on him you know what i mean like it's got you gotta where's the twist yeah yeah mullins where's the twist yeah but i'm with you on this daniel mullins makes crazy games there's one game he did for a um the dread x collection that might be like seven minutes long also he did a uh um indie like game jam one and you can find it, it's totally free and it's like a clicker kind of where dodger you may love this one hmm. it's one screen and it's a planet and you are building societies in like the indus river valley or the yellow river valley those kind of things okay and you're building up civilizations and you have to manage hmm. you know all these different people and you know the religious beliefs but over it's like baby's first civ game where you're just kind of building this kingdom and then once you do it this like orb comes out of the ground and then you can go to another one and start building there and then like an orb comes out of the ground and i don't want to spoil it i'm not going to say anymore but just okay Roger, I think you would very much like this game. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. What was it called? Mm. I, oh, boy. Uh, that's a great question. I don't know. Dan Mullins. Don't worry. I got the internet. I can look this up. Give me a title. Give me a name. Bulba. Okay. Well, calm down. It's called... Uh, it's Ludum Dare, Ludum Dare 52 called B-O-B-A. Boba. 
Booba. Yep. All back Booba. to Booba. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I did wish there were some more indies. I guess the first half of the show had the indies. Uh, and then it oh, was kind yeah. of mostly ads for the second. But um, there were a few good ones there. Oh, oh, that yes. freaking, the walking, the walking bird game, the Australian walking bird game. That one. That, Ooh, I might be most what? excited for that one. What game? Okay, so they, yeah, Big Walk. They they just introduced it as, uh, it's the, the Untitled Goose Dev game. Devs. Oh, amazing, yes. And it's an open world, like, survival, not even survival, really. It just seems like open world hangout in a, like, Australian outback style uh explore exploration you know place but you're all these little you know like the little birds they go like Doop, when they like their heads fall in like the water the glasses of water and they go like Doop. yes yeah you're just those guys and it's multiplayer and there's just a bunch of them and they're all like running around walking around like exploring they walk just having a big walk and you just <laughs> do a big walk with your buds okay and i don't really know if what the the opposition is if there's I don't any, think there is. Like, I, think it, it's, I think it's, it's yeah. It's just a game designed to go hang out with your friends in a like. Sp the question I have based on on the video was when it, we meet our two characters that are like in the main focus of the video, they see way in the distance mm -hmm. some other friends hiking up a mountain, and they're like, "Oh, we got to go meet those guys," and that's the vibe. My question of the whole thing is when you load in because it's like, "Hey, play a game with your friends." That's the whole point, right? When you load in, am I in a different space than when you are and we have to find each other? Mm -hmm. Or do those people just start on their adventure a little earlier than these people? Or do they all load in the same place and then just go different directions like, oh, we got to come back together again. You know what I mean? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. But you can see in the distance, it kind of looks like, um, what is that, Game & Watch? Whatever those little the little dude is. You can yeah. see them in the distance kind of climbing a mountain. And then the, the two characters who have like a pingu kind of like, Wah, right? <laughs> They, they, they're like, let's go. And so they go on a little fun adventure and it looks so cute. Everything about it looks very sweet. And yeah, I don't know. Again, Kraken's right. I don't know what the gameplay is. Mm. If it's more than like, well, that was an hour of fun. Or if there's something actually happening. No clue. I think, I feel like there's been, ever since Journey, really, there's been um, an interest in making games that inspire um, cooperation between people that can't communicate, really, and know nothing about each other, um, <laughs> which I think is, which I think is really cool. Mm hmm so if yeah, that's, it, it if that's what this is, if it's like you load in and you're, uh, you know, a sippy bird among sippy birds <laughs> <laughs> and you just have to figure out how to do stuff. I, I yeah. would love that. Yeah. Like, I mean, that makes sense too from the untitled goose dev. Cause that game's all about you communicate just through honks. Right. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, theoretically making just like a little sipping chicken, just go like, like, what? whenever they like need help with something and then you just have 12 of them doing that. And then you just go where you see them. Uh, that would be neat if it was like a, a public kind of come across them as you go. Mm -hmm. So who knows? Are you confirming right now that you're the voice actor for a big walk? Well, I wasn't ready, but uh, I, I guess the cat's out of the bag. You're right, wow. Jesse. You heard it here first. Sorry. Dude. I'm the sipping chicken. Rawr. <laughs> it works good. it's very good um we also had uh the i'm gonna say once again insane trailer from kojima um a game that once again has been described as multiple times not a game not a movie a transcendent piece of art yeah. that's what i keep hearing and i don't know what that means and I don't no think they does. know what that means. No, it does. <laughs> yeah. I, but I will say. Wanted to make his oh. movies for a while, right? So this is like, mm. this to me is is his best, like, shot of doing that. But still in the medium that people know him for and love yeah. him for. And so he's able right. to 
get that across. But yeah, what were you going to say? No, I, I don't know. I saw a lot of people online talk about how they couldn't tell what was happening in the trailer and they thought it was weird. And some people were like, we don't like the trailer. I don't know if it's just because I was watching on a giant ass screen, but I didn't hear a damn thing any of those characters said, but I was so focused on their eyes. Mm -hmm. Like if you, if you can like enhance what's going on in their eyes is incredible. It's so creepy looking. The end was a very obvious like door opening up, but like I was obsessed with that thing. I was like, okay, we're going to get some creepy game. But I know nothing, and I never will anything. If it's anything like Death Stranding, I won't know after beating it. It'll take me having a <laughs> five-hour conversation with someone. Video game movie experience, and then be like, that certainly was a thing that I experienced. Yeah. I did it. I don't, um, I don't know what to expect from this game. I don't know. There's so many actors and people involved, and <laughs> I, have no I have no clue. I did like the I funny dream door is. bit on stage that would open and then a new celebrity would come out. And I liked the idea that it was just always there. And mm -hmm. every guest was just waiting behind there one at a time to come out. Um, I, I love, I, I love weird. I'm sure you're aware. I love weird stuff. So that was right up my alley, but also it once again said nothing, told us nothing. And we, I, Kojima does that. And then expects us to be like, well, we know what it is. So we're very excited. Like, <laughs> if anything, he's the master of the tease. Mm. That's like his thing. He's he just constantly finds a way to be like, I'm gonna tell you nothing. Also, here's my friends to help me make a thing, and you're like, okay. And they also had a was it Sean Murray that came out and talked about the, the No Man's Sky dev about their new game. I appreciate they're making something new. I I thought it was so funny how he comes out and he was like. Yeah, we learned a lot about how much we hyped No Man's Sky up, uh, you know, seven years ago or whatever. And, uh, you know, sorry, I, I think we, you know, we made it up with all the work we've done. It's a good game now. Uh, we have a new game and it's literally Earth. And we've made, you know, all of the <laughs> human civilization and we've made like the perfect sim, but we're focusing just on like, and I'm like, my brother, no, <laughs> he just, like, just does it all over again. The uh, crazy thing is, is he prefaced it all by saying, we're just a 12-person team. Yeah, yeah. He's so, like, and I was like, homie, <laughs> don't do this. We're 12 people and we made Earth. It's it's whatever. It's, um, he just, I will say. He, he said it was more hype. ambitious. Exactly. He's like he was you. Like, He's like you, yeah, Kraken. Yeah. He just, the hype fuels him, you know? Yeah, 100%. I I feel for him because I, <laughs> I really do believe he's like a genuine, it gets excited. I mean, it's like the yeah. same as like Peter Molyneux. In some ways, I think Peter, Peter Molyneux, a little, a little more up his own ass a little bit. But, you know, the thing is, Sean's been able to follow through with, like, the No Man's Sky stuff. So I do believe, you know, in the execution. It's just, man, I don't know if I can go through that whole thing again of, like, the, uh, you know, the buzzwords of, like, yeah, you can do anything. The most ambitious, like, we made... And then, like you know, a human concept that we can barely wrap our head around, and then people right. are like, "I'd like to, I'd like that." It um, feels um, like when people talk about the blue sky phase in development. Mm, yeah, it feel mm. it feels like it's really hard for them to do the blue sky phase and not pare it down. They just do the blue sky phase and go, "That's it. That's what we're making." <laughs> It's like, wait, no. Yeah. This is this is the stage where we say, if we had unlimited resources, what would we make? And then right. we pare it down to the resources we actually have. It's like the you know the the phrase "kill your darlings," where yeah. you know when you have like it's a dark, but you, when you have like you know this beautiful idea that's like this would be wildly successful, but yeah, we're we're a twelve people dev studio. We can't do this. How do we get that same sensation? in like the most optimal path possible. Right. Um, yeah, it seems like they they kind of have a lot of darlings and they're all still running around. So, you know, <laughs> we'll see how many make them make it to the, the They've screen. Got many darlings, so. Many darlings, gotta start, Yeah. you know. There was a headline there that they completely missed though. That entire time I was like, okay, so what, it's like Earth and we're all on Earth? There were otter people and bunny people. Yeah. I what about I want to be an otterman. 
I want to swim. I'm going to swim in the water. I want to live my life. That yeah. I was like, okay, I want to play that game. I don't want to play the humans. Let me be an otter person. Well, I think yeah. you can be an otterman. I, I think the, the vibe I was getting from it was like, you know, kind of similar to how we talk about the aliens, right? Like how aliens are, how we imagine animals, but like us, mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the energy that that game was putting out was like, what if earth, but otters, what if earth, but lizards and Great. you know, maybe each iteration of earth is a different one of those, or it's all right. of the above it. I, I mean, I think the good, the good thing that they have going for them is they have all this tech developed from no man's sky mm -hmm. that they can like hone in on for one planet and make that a really satisfying gameplay loop. And I think if they, if that's the goal, which seems like it's based on the trailer, what they're going for, mm -hmm. I think they actually have a good shot of, of making something good. Um, I'm curious what the, uh, um, like they said it's open. It's one big world and what you do in the world changes it. And everyone always says that always. And it's mm -hmm. never accurate. Right, it's like either an instance well, thing. Well, technically, or it's like, if I mine one block in Minecraft, that's a changed world, Jesse. So. Well, yeah, but it's like then you can reset the world. I'm waiting for the game Touché, my where, it's, where it's one world, and it's like whatever you're doing, that's the thing you're doing, and you're like, you know, it could be a huge, huge world, but like if if I, I was talking with Ben, I was like, I'm waiting for the game where I can go in and build Jesco. And it's literally all my friends and I making the evil corporation that yeah. like deforest. I want to see how much I can destroy the world just yeah. as like an exercise in being evil and right. how that would change things like, oh, well, we collected all the wood. I'm so sorry. Do, would you like to build a house? Yeah. You now work for Jesco. <laughs> like, I want that kind of thing. Oh my God. Basically, I want to dig deep and greedily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want I want to experience that game deep. where it allows yeah. me. I, I have to imagine that would be some type of amazing experience if only for the one iteration because after that it'd be a hellscape yeah but it'd it, be fascinating yeah, to watch just like real earth i mean if you're able to recreate the hyper capitalist society we live in in this in a video, video game, game and then it like it, it'd be dark uh, but it'd be amazing it, would be a it like actually kills game. the planet and you're like wait a minute <laughs> and you like go back and, and uh yeah i think that'd be fun it would be fun but to destroy the earth but then like if you think about it could you then do, well, the earth is destroyed. Now we're in this post-apocalyptic society. Right. We're like, where the otters all wear like hoods and, yeah. and yes. hunt down exactly. the lizard Mad people. Max driving around. Yeah. Like, I, I wonder if that would be a fast. It, it's, it's almost on the same level as if you played, again, Kojima, for some reason, showing up a bunch. If you play Death Stranding now and then Death Stranding after everyone made roads. Yes. I, I have Wait, question. you asking? Oh, okay. Yeah, you don't have to raise your hand. You can just be like, "Shut up, dumb dumb." Let me ask you a question. <laughs> I have a question. Did they show any pictures of Earth? Did we uh, see? Any, did we see any pictures of what they're making? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was a trailer. The whole video. There's there a whole video. Okay, cool. Hence yeah, the otter. That's how I know about the, the otters and the bunny. People. I was curious because uh, I'm I I when you <laughs> first started talking about this game. Um, the word, if you play a lot of, or played a lot of The Sims, the word mm -hmm. sim, despite applying to so many different games, will always first make you think of The Sims. <laughs> and so I was imagining a team being like, we made Earth. It's a sim on Earth. And I was like, they made The Sims, but it's the entire planet. <laughs> It's not called Which, Earth, though. It's called something else. It's called Light No Fire. I just looked right. it up again. Yeah. Um, yeah, it... I mean, what we're describing is kind of literally buying into the exact same hype that happened with No Man's Sky. Like, yeah. we're, nope. Yeah. We're getting ahead of ourselves, and we're like, what if this and this and this? And we're just, like, you know, imagining all these possible outcomes. And that's, mm -hmm. you know... Oh, I remember why I liked it now. I'm looking at the trailer again. <laughs> Uh, the second shot, they have a skeleton walking around with a, a hammer and two baby skeletons walking next to them. <laughs> and it looked like you could either play as the skeletons or play as the babies or I like there was like a different barren wasteland depending on your choices or I don't 
who knows? It, that's the thing. I love that. All of this is all speculation, and it, it it's working because I'm excited. Damn it! And I, damn you, Sean. But also, <laughs> ah, I appreciate can't, your. Can't wait to be a baby skeleton, dude. <laughs> yeah, but that's but that's the pitfall of all of this stuff, especially you know these hype events like this where they show you a clip, you get very excited about something that doesn't even exist yet, yeah. and you're just like, this is gonna be amazing. And every time, every time, it's like, well, wasn't. Wasn't wasn't what I expected. And all I'm gonna say is we talked about it a few weeks back, the BlizzCon event where I was really excited for season discovery. I was like, that might be the thing that gets me to play again. That looks amazing. You mean I can be like a warlock tank or I can everyone I know who's playing it right now is like, yo, this is not even remotely what was promised. This isn't this isn't this isn't good. They get you. The hype gets you. Yeah. What can I say? Okay, you can definitely play as a bunny person. I'm looking at it again. Yes, that's yeah. all I want. I want to be a bunny person. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm still into it. We also had uh, a big announcement from Sega. I was blown away by that. Um, oh, yeah. Sega's bringing it back. They have new Jet Set Radio, mm -hmm. new Crazy Taxi, new mm -hmm. Streets of Rage, new Golden Axe, new Shinobi. Damn. I was like, let's go. Yeah, that, that actually, besides Monster Hunter, that was the second biggest crowd reaction. Was that Sega? Like, people were losing it. I think also because the audience was definitely mostly 30 plus. So you had a lot of people, like, their core memories as a kid hmm. were these games. When Crazy Taxi showed up and Jet Set Radio showed up, people went bonkers, especially Crazy Taxi. So... Yeah. That was pretty cool. Seeing that was very, very fun, but also like hyper nostalgic. So nice. that was pretty, that was pretty cool. Um, we also had a new blade game. Saw nothing of the game, Yeah. but yeah, I like blade. So, all right. I, I mean, like the like, dude's okay. jacket. Dude, the, the presenter, he was sick. Yes. What was his name? Like yeah. Oh, you missed the, so we saw him walking down the aisle. The back mm. of his jacket's even cooler. He's got these like, crazy designs that look like it's like blood stuff, but also feathers. Like it was a gr I was like, damn. I, I yeah. could tell as soon as he walked out and, and like announced the thing, I was like, I'm getting that freaking jacket. Yo, who's your tailor? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That jacket was cool <laughs> as hell. Um, we also got, if you love DLC, uh, Final Fantasy 16 DLC, God of War DLC. Uh, my goodness. A bunch of other ones that I'm trying to scroll through and find now, but uh, we got a we got a bunch, um, and then we also had, uh, I think it's called the Last Sentinel, which was which oh, is yeah. that game that I don't know what it is, couldn't explain it to you, but it is robot mommies getting beat up. And then mm. the last sentinel shows up and fights people. It was like Detroit become human, but like with violence. Yeah. I don't, I honestly don't know what this game is. Detroit become human. It was just a movie. Gumbo? What now? Gumbo? Dumbo? 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 What? Baby of mine. <laughs> oh, because of the mother. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> It's and uh, so, uh yeah it, it it was like there were a bunch of orphans human orphans with baby Maybe? nannies yeah. and then the, the yeah super it's cool it's Dumbo yeah I it's mean, yeah, maybe just it's like, like that Dumbo. it's Dumbo it's exactly if, like if Dumbo was like a motorcycle riding samurai he woman he is so oh okay <laughs> i thought you were saying Dumbo like the elephant i am saying Dumbo. <laughs> Wait, Dumbo? We're trying to oh, my God. I, where, where are you going? I cannot follow. You're like... <laughs> I'm so sorry. Just keep talking. <laughs> Have you been reading I... Dumbo to Clark recently or something? Like, is this... Yeah, is this... what are you... What's happening right now? Why <laughs> I'm Dumbo? So I'm this sorry. This is a beloved no. story. <laughs> There's a mother in Dumbo? Yes, I'm aware. There's a mother in a lot of media. Yeah. I'm a surprised lot of why she picked Dumbo the elephant with the flying ears. Technically, everyone born has a mother. I don't understand why yeah. we chose Dumbo. 
You would have gone get so it. many different ways. <laughs> I don't know. Oh. I'm sorry. Keep <laughs> no, it's, I've, I feel she's crying now. We made her cry. No, no, that's what I'm a good cry. That's what I'm a good cry. <laughs> Why not Bambi? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, we don't know what the point of Dumbo was, so how can we replace All it with I know, something else? When you I think Dumbo, say. I think flying ear elephant. And, and yeah. None of those things applied to this trailer, so I'm trying the to find the common him. thread. Like, that's beautiful. There was but a also mother. That, there yeah. was an implied mother. That was, there was a mother in Bambi, like, too. Uh, that's true. Yeah. There's a mother in 90% of Disney films, so I feel like we could... I don't understand the reason for Dumbo, so I don't want to substitute another mom in there until I know why. She can't explain Dumbo. she's crying. <laughs> because in Dumbo, it's specifically like the mommy is put away and then the baby has to go to the church. None but of that was in the trailer, though. That was not what happened at all. I'm just was... working off of what was said. <laughs> Okay, well, I think we're thinking of two different experiences. Yeah. Uh, but what you're describing sounds fun too, like a like a robot baby going to find her mom with ear. Yeah, it's also an ears. elephant. We have it's big also ears. an elephant. Yeah, that yeah, would be cool. Was, yeah, we should make that game. Um, Dumbo. It's like Lies of P, but it's ears of D, and it's about ears an elephant going to find an elephant going to find his mom. Yeah, uh, I'd play but they're it. all robots too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're animatronics. I love, I love that. Uh, you like, <laughs> you're like, I'm gonna throw out this reference because I think this applies to what they're saying. <laughs> and we both were like, you but I had trying to, to find the down. Thread. <laughs> <laughs> you both were like, no, and I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you even God. sang it, and I was like, wow, she's really. <laughs> She really is thinking of Dumbo right now. Like, like, she's right. But uh, yeah, you, you should watch the trailer. I think you'd be surprised. Uh, it's not like Dumbo at all. Not at all. No, not at it all. actually says very little. Uh, <laughs> In fact, the fact that you could get Dumbo out of it would be shocking if you watched it. I would be impressed. I think you should triple down and break down how that trailer. Be like, let me tell you exactly <laughs> all of the ways that this lines up perfectly with Dumbo. Yeah, the iconography of yeah. uh, motorcycle lady breaking uh, through a Japanese orphanage. That's just like Jiminy Cricket. It's just <laughs> like the flying pink Wait, elephants. No, that's not, that's He's not, not even in one. Dumbo. Jiminy yeah. Cricket isn't in that one. No. I was thinking Pinocchio. A lot of movies end with O. Good observation, Jesse. A lot of movies do end with O. Yeah, this, is a, this is a high round podcast. And a lot Thanks of stories have guys. moms, Dodgers. So what the fuck yeah. are you talking about? We've <laughs> never been roasted so perfectly. Sicario. Little <laughs> Mermaidio. <laughs> Fargo, uh, don't nod game Memento. called Lost Records, Bloom and Rage. Dukes, the best way to describe this game is yes. uh, four kids who are all teens that clearly all love each other and are all in sort of a poly relationship. That's what I could gather from this trailer. Okay. There's what? four four teens that all seem to be loving, and then Kraken did it, not get it, the same vibe. Keep talking. I was still thinking about Dumbo. I, I was still on Dumbo. <laughs> Is Dumbo in a poly relationship now? <laughs> no, no. Lost Records is oh. the new Don't Not game. So it's four kids, and they are um, uh, like out in the woods, living the life, smoking. They do that scene where like one person lights another cigarette with their own cigarette, and they're like, yeah. "Oh, we're in love, right?" right. But then, right. then uh, they all look down a hole, and there's this weird pink light. Which I was like, "This is the most Don't Not color scheme I've ever seen." A weird pink light blasts them. And then it cuts to 20 some years later, and the a woman's like, Why is it happening now? And I was like, That's the kind of shit I'm here for. If it was just mm. teens being like, We're out in the woods and we're like uh, curious about our sexuality and we're living, they've done it before. Don't Nod's done that so much. Now they're like, 
but it what happened for 20 years and there's some weird shit in the forest that's what yeah. i'm here for let's it, go it's like yeah it's like polyamorous like uh queer coded it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, very, that's a very okay. good way to describe it. Yeah, which Except like it's know. already kind of queer coded, you know, if we're it honest. Is, so yeah. it, it's you know, it, it's it's like the it monster is just pink and and right. progressively. It's fabulous. Uh, it's a fabulous, fabulous monster. Yeah, and it's coming back to uh, do something. I, if, yeah, like we hands. don't know. Yeah, it's uh, I, yeah. Instead of it, it's called if. Like we if. don't know what that is. <laughs> There's clearly something in the like they they did the oh, yeah. the whole beginning of the trailer is literally the most don't nod life is strange thing you've ever seen. It yeah, it was really hard not to like, make fun of. I'll be honest, it was very. I, I, it's very much like they did the walk where it's like the four of them slow walk in and they're like, yeah. we're teens and we're up to no good. We're trying to find they ourselves. All kiss each other and then yeah, like, yeah, very don't naughty. And then yeah, then they see something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And then they see something down a hole, and then it cuts to black, and then it's like, you know, it's been twenty years. Why is this happening now? And that's the I'm here for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I've experienced the every mistwa. don't want game. Yeah. So like, yeah. I get it. I get the bit, but also I'm like, okay, we switched it up. This is gonna be fun. So I'm I'm definitely here for that. That's gonna be a good one. Mm. Um, a new mana game is coming out. Visions of mana. Um. It was crazy being one of like four people in the audience who knew what that game was. Uh, just because when the tree was visible, I was like, oh, is this a new secret of mana game? And and yeah, most people until Very the end were like, that. whoa, I couldn't believe this is making a new game. But while the trailer was happening, no one had a clue what that was, which was yeah. wild. But uh, I'm very excited. I love the mana games. Mm -hmm. They're a ton of fun. Um, Jurassic Park Survival. That could be a blast. The whole thing was uh, it's cinematic. IP. So, yeah, yeah. We don't. I have There's no a lot idea of movie if games it's coming out. Movie games are back, and I'm I'm kind of excited for that because I think they're always mm. funny. There's that. And there's the Avatar game, uh, which can I? Yes. So I've played the Avatar game. <laughs> okay. Oh. Um, it's just it's Far Cry Avatar. Let's be real. Yeah. But here's the thing about it that will like. It has an in-depth system of crafting and gathering and stuff that I think might be too much. I don't like the best way to describe it is um like when you kill an animal, right? You literally do like a hey, wah. like you do a whole <laughs> thing to like honor the animal. When you pick a plant, you're like picking the plant and like soothing the I can believe that for people who want to have the Avatar experience, that's exactly what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> the average gamer is going to lose their mind. There's yeah. no way they're going to enjoy that. Because everything I mean, just takes too long? Or... Yeah, it's like, I need 12 more fiber to make my you know pickaxe. And you just have to right. AWA every single plant <laughs> to get your 12 fiber. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and it doesn't, like, when you pick something, there's like a mini game where you have to like pull it the right direction so you don't destroy the plant. Like that kind of thing. And again, if you want to live the Avatar experience, that's what that game is. Mm. That game is like, you are in it. And it feels like you are in the world. One of the quests, it, you just got to like, go get your flying mount thing. And that was incredible. Like, it's it feels like, oh my God, I'm in the movie. But the basics of like, I'm just going to run around and look for stuff. You are climbing through the trees and you're doing, you're just like, Oh, oh, I'm just like, oh man, <laughs> this game, there's going to be a big divide on this one for mm. sure. There's some people who absolutely love it and they're super into it and they're role playing their best life. And there's going to be people that cannot handle the fact that this game is, is not quick. Like I remember for horizon, people lost their minds where, where Aloy would bend down and pick up a thing and keep moving. So they now are like, just spam a button. You can grab stuff as you run. Like right. that is, <clears throat> that is where most gamers are. And I'm like, <sighs> now again, that was a beta version. So it's, they may have changed it. It would be pretty but, funny if they, they made a compromise where like, 
they just got rid of the animation, but they still do the whole AWA thing. So they're just like running <laughs> AWA, by AWA, like AWA, every other survival uh, AWA, game. Like, AWA, 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 AWA. <laughs> just like grabbing all these plants, ripping them from the soil. <laughs> I will say that the best part while playing is I would, as a character, just not even in game, just me, Jesse. Yeah. Everyone I met, I'd be like, I see you <laughs> every time <laughs> just to the screen. I'd be like, I see you, Jake Sully. Yeah, that's, you know. <laughs> Avatar. It's a thing. Yeah. It's a worldwide phenomenon. You're right, though. It's like, what what are you looking for with this game? And mm -hmm. if you want sort of a, a slow, ethereal experience, and that's what the game offers, then you'll be delighted. And if you, you know, want to be uh, spam clicking and running through shit, maybe you won't be as excited. Yeah, I, I, there's clearly an audience for it. 100% there's going to be an audience for it. It's just, I'm not sure how big that audience is in the like gamer verse, right? Cause again, a lot of people don't have the patience to like every plant be like, thank you. <laughs> you know, like, mm. yeah, no, 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 I'm gonna, you know, by the end of it, you're just like, maybe the humans were right. It's taken <laughs> an awful long time to do things. Unobtainium would clear up this whole problem. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. So that looked kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, Jurassic Park, it was just a video, right? But I like the concept. Jurassic Park Survival does a thing that I think is very smart in that most horror games can't do. Where so, if you imagine a horror game, any horror game, just think of one. There's always Monster A, which is the thing hunting you down, right? But then, at a certain point, they always have to do that like, well, Monster A is busy in another part of the building right now. <laughs> so you got you to gotta dodge Monsters B or Monster C. And they're always... You know, like, uh, I was uh, I was thinking back to, like, some of the other... Uh, alien Isolation is a great example, where you're there for the alien, but then they throw, like, other crap your way, where you're just like, no, I want, to, I want the alien. I don't want to deal with this other stuff. Right. Jurassic Park, I think, might be the one IP where they can get away with this. Because, obviously, you're going to have one big bad, be it the T-Rex, be it the raptors, be it whatever... But then there are all these other dinosaurs trying to kill you, and we know those other dinosaurs. So when a, you know, like if like 16 compies show up trying to bite your butt off, or, you know, what is that guy, the Gallimimus? Whatever the dude who spits on you, right? Mm -hmm. That's not Gallimimus. Whatever the spitter is, it's you. I don't Yeah, Dilodophus. Yeah. Um, that's one. You can have, there's all sorts. You can, you know, if you fall in the water, you're probably dead, right? There's, a million different dinosaurs you can use that can change up what you're running from, what you're hiding from. And I think that is an incredible asset for them. Again, all we saw was a video, but like the idea of being a scientist stranded after I assume Grant and all the characters, the main one left. That's pretty fun. That could be very good. But again, we know nothing. It's literally just a concept. Really? Hmm. So that was cool. Um, the we got some more Wukong stuff, and I'm Ooh, all about that. I look so, so cool. excited for that. Yeah, that yeah. I I mean, like we were talking about earlier, I love mythology. I love you know all these different like traditional care like I don't know history and, and mythos, and I know almost nothing about Chinese mythology. So to have a whole game. And those creatures looked freaking wild. They looked great. And I'm really excited to like be able to to experience it through like this new lens. Um, Have you ever watched also, any of the, the Wukong movies or any of the like Journey in the West stories or anything? Nuh uh. So good. They're so it is, you're absolutely right in that when you go into this, it's a new type of mythology that if you're used to mostly like Western mythologies. This is going to blow. You're going to be like, bro, what? It's going to blow your mind. It's absolutely. It, it's absolutely uh, like a wild trip of creepy creatures and like dudes that steal your face and like epic battles against things as giant as the earth. Absolutely insane. I can't wait for people to see this. So, yeah, hearing you be like, I know nothing about it. You're going to yeah. love it. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, and then uh, speaking of of games that I'm definitely gonna love, the new Hellblade Two trailer. Whew! 
It looks so good. <clears throat> God, they um, announced a lot of stuff, didn't they? That's yep. what we were saying at the beginning. That's it was less no awards, awards <laughs> yeah. and more. Um, Hellblade 2, the guys behind us, the like dudes behind us who were talking the entire time were like, yo, is this is this all cinematics? And I want to turn around and be like, this is the game, bro. <laughs> it looks so good. Um, if you haven't played the first one, before this game comes out, play the first Hellblade. You will be like, oh my. Oh, and wear headphones. That's my tip. That's my tip. Play, play the first one, wear headphones, and uh, don't get creeped out, kids. But that game's it's incredible, and uh, I'm, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for the second one. It looks so creepy in the best ways. There's a shot of her face. It might be the best face render I've ever seen in a video game. Mm. And then, like, hands coming around it, like, I was like, this oh, is yeah. amazing. It looked great. Yeah. Uh, and then, God, there's so many games. I don't even know where to go. There were so many games. We got um, Windblown, I believe, is the name. Yeah. The, um, oh, yeah. The newest, uh, what is that? Dead the Souls. Dead Pixels team? Yeah. Yeah, Dead Souls. Um, but Dead like Cells, yes. Furry, Dead Cells. Dead Pixels. Furry critter and very bloody looking. Mm. Uh, it looks like um, three players, maybe? There were three characters yes. you could be on screen. Yeah. And it potentially might be three player co op. And that was that screamed Dodger game to me so badly. Yeah. Cute critters fighting big monsters with like epic swords and stuff. That sounds right to me. Yep. Yep. I was like, Dodger's going to love this game. This is going to be a huge Dodger game. Um, and then, oh man, there's so much, um, there, there was a new dead by daylight, like single player story. <clears throat> okay. There's man. Dead um, by daylight took off so much during like COVID lockdowns. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel like that's when that game really started thriving well, in a big way. Yeah. They, well, even before that, they like sold so many copies and I think you're right over COVID it kept going somehow and which is like weird to me because the gameplay loop is so basic from my yeah. you know perspective but uh people just like being chased or being the chaser it's mm. just like one of those games and i so, like being the chaser i love yeah. hunting I'm, that's a weird you know, thing to say but i do love hunting people sure yeah. everyone's hunting got types <laughs> yeah. yeah um it makes sense to me though like what they're doing and i kind of respect it that they have I mean, more money than they know what to do with, clearly. Mm -hmm. um, and so now they're putting that money into fleshing out the IP that has become popular from this game mm -hmm. that is has no real backstory. Like, it's just kind of like a quick blurb about each of the, the killers. So they're like, hey, let's make a cinematic, you know, murder horror experience for each of the, the killers, potentially, which right. I think is mm -hmm. the direction they're going. So smart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that also, I think segues into one of the devs that worked on oh the gtfo dev that was originally on payday their next game is going to be a space heist game mm. um looks like kind of a mixture of gtfo and payday uh which looked really cool yeah den of wolves that trailer oh I yeah that looks really that looked pretty cool yeah yeah so i i'm down for some like i love heist stuff in general and mm. I don't think I've ever seen it done in like the sci-fi setting, which I think would lead to a whole bunch of cool, uh, I don't know, gadgets and, and whatnot that you can use to get some loot. Yeah, mm. it, it did have strong vibes of like, you've played this game before, but now yeah. it's crazy weird and in space. I'm like, yeah. all right, I'm in, I'm back. You got Great. me. I'm not. Yep. Go yeah. Got it. Um, and then they had some games like uh, Harmonium, which was the musical game, which is about, I believe, is about a deaf girl, a deaf girl who uh, ends up in like a world of music, so she can see them. Like I, it was very nice. It looked beautiful. I was really impressed. I was like, okay, let's go. I love some games like that. That was very cool. Um, world of Goo Two is the thing that's happening, and it's coming, and that's gonna be. I forgot how big World of Goo was. I forgot. Yeah, World well, of Goo. I forgot how big that game was. So World of Goo 2 is coming. Um, we Again, we got another look at uh, Suicide Squad. Couldn't tell you if that game's going to be good or not. Uh, I hope it's good, but like I'm afraid it's going to be jank. We'll see. We'll see. Um, we got uh, some more Stormgate footage. 
And um, then we got the, the Matthew McConaughey game that he came out to announce. That was Exodus, which looks kind of like... Uh, Interstellar? The yeah, like... Game? Yeah. I guess. I'm not sure what to make Although, this game. Also, I didn't see Matthew McConaughey in that trailer at all. He yeah. was like, I'm a character in this game, and you're going like, to maybe be able to... Up, guys? I'm, yeah, my first video game debut. I'm in this game, and they showed the trailer, and he was not in it. Not in the trailer <laughs> at all. Like, yeah, what well, weird so choice to have him present it. Interesting, because so, I I feel like the expectation now is if somebody if a, a celebrity says I'm in that game, you assume they mo capped that celebrity, and you will right. see like that celebrity as a character, but mm -hmm. maybe he's just a voice. I, or, if he yeah. was the voice of the of the character, and it did not like he's an amazing voice actor. It didn't sound like him at all, at oh, like, all. It definitely wasn't him. I there was like two characters they showcase in that trailer, and they're like the main two characters, and he was neither of them. So I think I was waiting for him to show up as like a robot or an yeah, AI. I, think I was something. waiting for something. I'm looking at nothing. It. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think he voiced the demon at the end. I don't remember. Yo, if he if he voices a demon, that's amazing. If it was and a demon, I don't know what. It would be kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> You're burning in hell. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> burning in the hell, brother. <laughs> yeah. Um, that was that was super interesting. I don't I don't know what to make of that game. It it is it, yeah. It's like Interstellar, Mass Effect, but also uh, like Event Horizon. Like I don't know what I don't know what to make of this game at all. So, but again, we didn't really see much. We saw clips of things. Oh, Simu. Yeah, Simu was the demon at the end of Stormgate. That's who I think you're talking, talking about. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what Exodus, I don't know what the vibe of it is, but mm. it's, it looks incredible. There's like a little crazy robot things. And yeah, it does have this, it does have the same backstory though as, Mass Effect, isn't it like they found some crazy stuff and it led to the to the gates and stuff, uh, the relays? It is the same thing. Like we're on Mars and we found a ship, and that ship's gonna help us defeat the aliens. It's like okay, yeah. all right, yeah, it does have a little Returnal too. It does have Returnal to it. Yeah, I don't know. I have no clue. I have no clue. But yeah, and then so many games that take place in the world of uh, Fortnite. <laughs> The rocket racing, the Lego, all of it, just a lot of stuff. Um, I'm and sure then, they're very fun. I'm sure. I'm sure. The, the Lego one is apparently fun. The it's dopamine like drip apparently. will be crazy and all. The of Lego that, games sure. are always kind of fun. Like no joke, they're always yeah. like, if you're looking for a simple fun. Oh, chat coming in strong. Yes. Dave the Diver, and Dredge have a combo DLC. Oh my god, that's amazing! Actually, yes, <laughs> that's so yes, good. and it comes out very soon. I think it comes out next week or something. Wow. Um, yeah, I totally forgot about that. Dave that the Diver's one was cool. a great game. Yeah, so imagine Dave the Diver, except being attacked by terrible underwater monstrosities. Yeah, great. I love it. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. Yeah, that looked very cool. Um, and then there was a game called Kamuri. I don't know what that game was about. I guess it's like uh, your Street ninjas fighting demons, mm. I guess. Sounds I don't know. good to me, dude. Yeah, um, they showed the finals again. I guess the finals is releasing a 1.0. The crowd reaction was exactly what you expect. Every dude who was clearly a like biz dev mm -hmm. losing their mind, so excited. Everyone who was an actor, pissed. <laughs> Everyone was <laughs> like, mm -mm, I don't support this game. Hmm. So that was the thing. Um, and then I'm um, trying to look through and see if there's skull and bones might finally eventually come out. So that, that could happen. Okay. Uh, you know, who knows that may, there was a game called no rest for the wicked, which we got, it seemed like more of a cinematic trailer, but I'm trying to see if there was any footage. I can't remember if there was, but I think it looked kind of like, um, 2.5 D maybe like a beat em up platforming mm -hmm. thing, I think, but I could be wrong. It's the Ori team. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's an action RPG, I guess, but uh, it looks gorgeous. And um, there's there's like a there was enough like sassy, like there was one like tough lady and like a redhead, I think. And I was like, all right, they're making a game for me. I'm here for this. And um, yeah, I mean, overall, it was just a lot of lot of trailers, 
so many trailers, mm. Dukes. So many, and then yeah, and then all the Hoyo Verse games that are coming that are just like we've got more money than God. Here's another anime game. Enjoy. Right. Well, um, cool. Yeah. The one, the one that I kept waiting for never popped up, but that's okay. Rise of the what Golden Idol. You should play it. I didn't even see it on this list. Oh, is this, so this must have been from the first hour then. They showed yeah, this because I didn't. I've one. never seen this one. Describe Dukes. Now you can describe one to me. Okay. Uh, so this is a, a follow up game. It looks like to the Case of the Golden Idol game, which has a couple of DLC as well. It's like a really, really unique puzzle game where you're mm -hmm. given a snapshot moment in time, and you are able to inspect every detail about that snapshot moment. Um, and it takes place, you have two separate screens. So you have the snapshot that you can look at and move around and read things and grab things and whatever. And then you have another page where you are taking that info. It's kind of Oprah Din ish. You're taking okay. that information and trying to lay it out so that it makes sense. So it'll have pictures of all of the people in that snapshot moment. What are their names? Fill out their names, right? Um, and then it'll have a description of what is happening in the scene, but with a bunch of words missing. So then it's mm. like, okay, so and so, I figured out this guy's name. So this guy showed up to try to talk to this guy about this thing. And I know that because he has a letter in his pocket saying that at this time of day, so and so is going to show up to talk about this thing, right? So you're basically you're taking as all of the information that you can in this moment in time and you're trying to figure out what is true um and so that's what the original uh case of the golden idol is about so it's a series of snapshot moments that tell like a long a long story um and it's really unique and so well done and the dlc was also great and when I was done with it, when they were like, this is our last DLC, it's over. I was like, there's no way that they're abandoning this format because it's so unique. It's really fun. It's so good. Um, one of those rare games where I finished it and I was like, I wish I could play that all over. I wish I could wipe my brain, you know, and start over. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they've, uh, it looks like they've got a new one coming out. Um, called The Rise of the Golden Idol. This one is going to take place in the 1970s, so it's a different time period. Um, uh, probably still dealing with the same bullshit shenanigans, but but in a in a different time with different people. So hey. what is, like, the narrative conceit uh, of the Golden Idol? Are, are you, like, this omnipotent detective? Are you using the idol as, like, a as a you, thing to channel your powers through? or what? You personally are are no one. Um, you aren't, you aren't like a detective that's been hired or anything like that. You're, you're like an outside observer that is piecing together a story. So mm. you, the, the game doesn't try to like fit you into the narrative. Um, it's just like playing out a narrative and then you decide, or you, you're trying to figure out what's going on based on what it's presenting to you. Yes. Basically. Okay. I, I just wanted to jump in here and say, um, Hey, why didn't you present all of these games to us, Dodger? Because your explanation of that game was better than anything we explained to you about any of the games we were talking about. Yeah, it was very about. concise because and very... You like, <laughs> were like, here's what the game is. Here's what the... Tra you were so on it. And Craig and I were like, yeah, so I think it's like uh, you're a guy. It's the, it's the thing with the... It's like the Dumbo elephant with the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't believe that you're saying this after I was like, it's like Dumbo, right? Um... I, I was this because because that's because we explained it so poorly. <laughs> you we said robot mommies and you went oh, Dumbo? Dumbo. That's how bad we were. <laughs> that's a failure of our education on you. Oh my goodness! That was that's our fault. Um, the game awards were going when I was asleep because time zones. So I literally couldn't be the guy that got to pitch all of these games to you guys. Well, you screwed so, up. All so, right, it's your fault. <laughs> you let everyone so, down. You made us have to do it, and honestly, we I were a terrible choice. I appreciate the effort. Thank you for taking the time to talk about all of the different stuff. And you were there. We were you had terrible. inside info. It was good. I will give you the the the, the best thing you missed is uh, well, I don't know what the video version like on stream was. Mm. The old gods of Asgard playing live 
was so cool in every way. And I know they had cameras on stage, so I don't know what they cut to or what they showed, but there was more happening on the stage than you can even imagine. They had the band in the back, they had the dancers in the front, but also they had over on one side the voice actor and Mr. Thor doing like the whole, they had the whole little side thing they were doing. Okay. There was people over on there. There were people everywhere. And I promise you that you saw, oh, and during that scene, I was sitting behind, they moved Todd Howard over. And so Todd, <laughs> right. and I think, I'm trying to remember who was next to him. They were so into it. I think I saw like them be human for a little bit. And it was amazing. Like e everyone was feeling the vibe. And I was That's like, great. yeah, rock this place, boys. It was yeah, it was great. Music is the, its own language, dude. Yeah, the the Heilung uh or Heilung uh performance looked amazing too. Um, yes, that was the only problem was is there was so much smoke in the room. Mm. Yeah. I couldn't tell you half the half it was not visible. So like all at one point all we saw were the like the red of the fire. Because there was so much smoke billowing in. <laughs> yeah, they, but they it did like sounded a, amazing. They did like an aerial shot at one point of the stage and panning over the audience, and the first two rows were just covered in in fog. Like you, yeah. they could not <laughs> see a thing. And I was like, it is, just yeah, it was amazing. Through the madness, yeah. It was so clearly yeah. like made for broadcast and not for the people in the front row. It was really sad. I will. I, I everything I enjoyed. Everything I enjoyed about it. The one thing I didn't enjoy that I thought was weird is they hyped up Timothy Chalamet the entire time. Like, he's going to be the awards, going to be amazing. And then Jeff hits him with, like, his username on YouTube, which is incredible. And I thought, this is going to be a great, this gonna be a great bit. This is going to be so much fun. Dude comes out, reads the award, waits, announces the award, leaves. I was like, Tim! <laughs> Timmy! Have some fun. TV what are you show. doing? <laughs> like, jolly boy. Have some. Yeah, I, I was just like, have some fun with it. What are you doing? I thought they were going to build up a whole bit. Nah. Yeah, he no came bits. out, did his job, and left. Aww, that was man. it. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone else seemed to be like at least trying, you know? Even if they didn't get it, there was very clearly some celebrity presenters like, I don't know what I'm doing here, but like, whatever. Right? Like, especially the cast of Fallout. Like, bless their sweet souls. They're not gamers at all, but right. they like put in some effort. Yeah, it's yeah. like Timmy, Timmy, come on! I know you play video games. G get a little hype, bro. Right. I don't know. He's too busy being Wonka. He's, he's too a, busy being he's a like method yeah. Actor. Yeah, yeah, he's he's like sorry, I can't play games. I've got dates with three supermodels later. So bye, everyone, <laughs> losers. <laughs> like Tim, oh, Tim no, Cal. you were one of us, Tim. Yeah. Uh, Matt Mercer seemed intimidated. I can tell you this from before we went inside talking with Matt. He was so nervous. He was so nervous. Because, uh, hey, spoilers, Matt's kind of like an introvert. Yeah. <laughs> Big and time. I'm like, you know, if he seemed intimidated because he was, is because he is not, like, you know, everyone he's, sees him as like, he's a sweet critical boy. role guy. And but he's, he, yeah, yeah, he's a nerd. Like he is a nerd, nerd. The uh, the man is in Zelda, and the team from Zelda approached him. and He freaked out. And he was Aww. like, "I can't believe they talked to me." And I was like, "You're, you're in the game, bro." And he's like, game. "Yeah, but like, I didn't, bro, I don't meet those you people." You are the guy in the game. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, of course, of course. But that's because he's like, in, you know, a nerd who's just extremely lucky. But there's a yeah. lot of them, and I'm sure if you're in, you know. I think the three of us know you go to parties, you meet someone and they're like, I'm the biggest thing on the internet. When you talk to them, they're like, hello. <laughs> so nice to meet you. Oh, well, well. It's crazy, but that's just the truth. That's what it is. Yeah. Yep. So yes, chat, you're correct. If that's what it appeared, it's because he was. Yep. <laughs> yeah. He was Jonathan Ganondorf. JG, uh, they called him. Yep. J -G. The big JG. JG Jingle Limer Schmidt. What? That's uh, where I. No, no one knows that. Uh, no. no. Sorry, I was so distracted by what JP yeah, wrote Jeff, in the chat. Someone, was, I too was distracted. I heard <laughs> you, and I was about to be like John Jacob Jingle. I was getting the whole thing with you, and then JP was like, "Yo, you smell Kojima's farts, bro." Damn, dude. So Did cool. You? Thanks, JP. Derail. No. <laughs> why would I? Why would I do no. that? <laughs> why would I? 
What would no. I want? The what happened actually, to hello, thing, JP? <laughs> the only thing you could smell was after the like chant was the the smell of the ozone of whatever was going, and then the like post fireworks smell from Old Gods of Asgard. Mm. Those were the only smells. Everything okay. else, no smells. There was a smellless zone. <laughs> Sorry, JP. J no, a JP's insisting sound. that we didn't read the full thing, and that if we did read the full thing, he wouldn't sound as crazy. It's I don't still, think it it's, sounds any better. It's weird. No matter no. what, JP. Mm. <laughs> mm. It's a. It's now he's trying to start a feud. No Good. It can only help us, JP. Feud away, pal. Feud away. You should get on our podcast sometime. Yeah. So that you, so can, you can call defend us out. Yourself. Mm, yeah. Sam also watched a clip of us roasting him for uh, his league behavior and was like, they need to get me on this podcast. <laughs> so maybe we just need to keep insulting people, but like in a light, friendly way. Yeah, call so out. They're like, right. wait a minute. Call out culture. <laughs> Hold on. Do you think you could get him on the podcast? <laughs> I don't I hear know. he's very popular. Get. That's yeah, you think you could get him? He's okay. got a kid, so it's kind of hard, but I'll, yeah, oh, I'll, yeah. I'll hey, give it a hey. good go. Yeah. Dude, just flirt with him a little. Like, you know, use it, girl. Yeah. Just <laughs> Do like, you think that'll work? I think it might work. You know, oh it could. Doesn't, doesn't hurt to try. <laughs> you know, use your feminine wiles. Try to get him on the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sam will be jealous of that. You know what? Sam jealous of Sam sounds like the most Sam shit I've ever heard. <laughs> That's true. I checked out. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Um. Yeah. I mean, that was the award show. It was whatever. It was fine. Yeah. Um. If you were there for awards, like, you know, but if you want to see the trailers, bless. You probably had a great time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, at uh, here's the thing, is at this point in the podcast, normally, like time wise, we would do we would do the homework section. Mm -hmm. um, I feel bad There's though. Uh, Kraken didn't get to talk about anything that he did aside from the game awards, so we might have to have you back on at some point. I don't mind. I'm I'm. I'm happy with you too. Wait, nice. what is the homework section? All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Crike it. What? 60 seconds. What? Six, hold on, 60 seconds timer. Mm -hmm. Give me exactly 60 seconds okay. to tell us everything about. What do you have to say again, Dodger? What was that? Everything what, was he, what does he need to share with us? About like if there if he's been enjoying any any games oh, or, right, right. or so comics 60 or seconds. shows or whatever. Yeah, you have sixty yeah. seconds to tell us everything you enjoy in life. Go. Uh <clears throat> all right. Video games. Two games uh that I've been playing a bunch recently. Lethal Company. Of obviously it's popping off, everyone loves it. I love it a lot. I played it a while ago and it's uh, people I keep playing it, and it's great. I, I think it's a really tight gameplay loop uh, built around playing with your friends. And, um, and, okay, okay, okay. And, and the, the, between the mod scene and, you know, the vision of the game, it's very clear that the dev knows exactly what they're doing, and they have a very clear kind of user experience that they're, I, I hope they, they stay true to. And... Uh, Alright, second, second game. I also like uh, FMV games a lot. I'm on a big FMV game kick. And did you know all FMV games are British for some reason? Uh, all the British people always make FMV games. There's one in particular called uh, Not for Broadcast, which is the best one yet. And that one has so Thank many cool so things to it. Thank you so much for watching Geek Enders, guys. We'll see you all next time. I'm kidding. I'm so kidding. Keep talking. <laughs> that was 57 seconds. No, it's too late. You I wasted some of the time. Oh, shit. I'm so sorry. I did a bit and I ruined it. <laughs> No, it's too. No, no. Actually, uh, two two seconds point one five. Two point one five seconds. So you're done. You're done. Wrap it up. Well, thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> Kicks rock. Um, I've also been playing Lethal Company, and it's very fun. Yay! Yeah. We should play together. We should play. I hear the Wait. mods are are crazy. I haven't tried playing it with mods yet. We uh we tried last night. There's two that we played that I hadn't tried before that added a lot. Um, there was one that 
adds mimic doors. So um, Sam told me about that. One. Yeah, fire exits will eat you, uh, and so you you, you know. <laughs> Don't trust every exit you see. And the other one was really original. And I think if they hone it, it will be amazing. That is a, uh, it's called the Skinwalker mod. And they basically record all, like, randomly grab audio that has been spoken in the lobby over the course of the game. And then apply that audio at random intervals to different enemies around. So you will be in like the facility and hear, you know, the Bracken or whatever talking as one of your friends saying something that they said five minutes ago. And you're turning around like, oh, huh? and then it's the Ooh. Bracken who's like <laughs> about to snap your neck. Um, and so we had a bunch of great moments with that last night. Uh, I'm still sorting through all the clips, but it was uh, it was great. That time, sounds so, so unpleasant. I would never play this game. That sounds so oh, unpleasant. Come on, Jesse. Never. I, look. I yeah, let's get him. Let's get him, Dodger. We, He's we literally should, playing I, I it think... with me after this podcast. <laughs> uh... <laughs> but I don't think you haven't played it before, though, Jesse. Right? This is no, your first time. No, no, I've never played this game once. I'm oh, a little boy. worried that I'm gonna be the person who has played this game the most, and I have I've played it once. So <laughs> no, that's I think that's great. fine. Like, the, the the less yeah. people have played, the more fun it is. It's like. Yeah, it's 100% uh, fantastic to go in with someone fresh and mm. see their reaction for the first time, you know? Yeah. Well, you're going to get it. You're going to get my first reaction for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> it's um, I haven't done any of the, like, higher... Uh, we, we pretty much only stuck to the, like, first three moons. Um, mm -hmm. The, like, easy moons, I guess you would say. Um, but I can, it never stopped being fun. Just, just cycling through those ones. And it's somebody when they were pitching it to me said, it's like horror Looney tunes. Um, mm -hmm. and I think it, it is. What like, does that mean? It you'll, you'll see. It'll make sense. Very <laughs> it's fast. like, yeah. it is like horror Looney tunes though. And I was worried that I was going to be so like freaked out playing it. Um, but it's like the perfect level of just like. There's there's just this underlying goof level that just that makes it so that you can keep playing it even if you're really sensitive to scary stuff I think, um, so yeah it's super fun I would love to do some of the scarier stuff and see like what that's like but I think even just the basic part of the game is really fun and silly. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, comment. Uh, Lethal Company understands that horror is cycles of tension that you have to resolve it and use innate humor to cap the tension. Yes. It's very much like actual scary moment and then you laugh. Yeah. Or, you know, your friend gets scared and it's funny and you laugh. Like it, it's this it's this back and forth so that you don't ever feel burnt out. It, it's yeah. it's a very good way of managing your your stress levels. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, very good for that. I have 52 hours in this game, so oh I, I'm like, it's made God. by, by okay. one dude, right? Like one teenager yeah. made the game. Yeah, 21, yeah. 21 year old. Um, it's crazy. amazing. Yeah, really excited to see what they do with it. Mm. But I hope that the pressure doesn't get to them. I've been saying this all the time on my stream, but like, there are way too many examples of, you know, like a, a an auteur creator that is like, you know, building their 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 passion project. And then it gets like massive attention and it blows it out of the water and everyone's expectations are suddenly, okay, make it faster, make it faster, make it faster. Or, you know, mm. the modding scene, like right now the modding scene is really popping off for Lethal Company, yeah. which is great because it's making more content, but they're now getting ahead of the dev cycle and like a right. bunch of the, the mods we're playing with now uh, are basically making things that I think the dev was going to add eventually anyway. And now suddenly they're in the game, but like not the way the dev would have done it. Right. And I I worry a little bit about mm. kind of cart before the horse in some scenarios or or people being like, oh, yeah, well, they have more money now. So just hire more help. But like that's a whole process. And especially if it's like a game you've been developing yourself for years. Right. Inviting yeah. other people into your baby is like <clears throat> that's 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 hard.
Yeah, it sucks when when a dev, you know, who is doing it by him or herself, like blows up and uh, sort of doesn't know what to do. And instead of working with you on a game, decides to make another sequel to a game that you love. <clears throat> Daniel Mullins, like it's it's one of the like it's one of the worst things <laughs> in the world. This is a goof. <laughs> like such such ego, so like just so much ego. Mm-hmm. Just like you're too good for me now, Dan. You're too that's good for it me. Is. It's ego. Yeah, you don't wanna... that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, Jesse, I don't know if the developer's name is Dan, so that's a confusing uh, kind of projection I'm hearing on your side. But um, maybe it is. So you know, yeah. who's, who's to say? Maybe, who knows? Who's to know? Yeah. 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 Also, managing a team at twenty-one. That's true. Uh, yeah. Sounds like hard. So rough. I pr- I promise you what they. If he met with anyone, I promise you that um, someone said you need either a producer or a manager or someone to come in and lead the team. And if you're young and you've done it yourself the entire time, that is a huge leap of faith. Because now you're trusting your entire IP to someone who wasn't there to build it Mm -hmm. to now run it while you get to create, which is... (sighs) It's hard. That's rough. Yeah. Yeah. I... That's that's the scary thing about releasing early access or like, you know, partially finished. I mean, I think it was smart in this case because Lethal Company's gameplay loop is already there. Like it, it's tight. The experience that is intended works and that's why mm-hmm. it's taken off so well. Um, it's just how to scale that without losing that charm is scary for anyone. And so yeah. I can't imagine what they're going through uh, with all this attention all of a sudden. So um, I don't know. I'm I'm hopeful. I, I think it's already really fun. So that's great. But uh, mm. yeah, I'm excited to hear what you guys think um, once you play a bit, Jesse. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited to see just what this, you know, like anytime there's a big game that blows up on the internet, I always feel left out because I'm not in it like immediately. Right. So I'm excited to jump in a little later and be like, all right, what is, why is everyone losing their mind over this game? What's this about? And I have a feeling I'll get it within minutes, but it's one of those things where I just haven't had time to even look at it. So yeah. I'm going in incredibly blind, but I know that everyone was like, you should play this game. So, all right, yeah, let's do it. It's, it's also true um, about the copycats. Yeah. There's another mm-hmm. comment um, that, if you look at any genre defining game, you know, other studios with more resources will just like swoop in and try to copy that format as soon as they can. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think lethal company has a bit more of a defensive position in that it's not really a new format. It's just like really well yeah, executed and like presented, but you know, there's a lot of ways I think it can be uh, undermined, I think, by other games trying to do the same thing. So who knows? But I, it, I, I, I like the iterations on it. Like, you know, copycats or whatever. I, you know, they, there's too many. But I like when people take a game and then, like, extrapolate it to something else. So I can see why, you know, if you look at the games that do well, especially on stream. You can see there's sort of like a leapfrog thing happening where it's okay. Like the last thing that was huge was phasmophobia. And that is friends getting together, hunting ghosts. And so then it's like the leap is we're friends getting together to go do things where monsters chase us on spaceships, I guess. But like same core vibe. It's you and your friends getting scared and laughing at each other, but it's another take on it. And I think th- it seems to be very successful that that is you know, people have figured out like, okay, here's what works on stream. And I don't know mm-hmm. if this was a COVID idea that it pe- uh, popped up where it was like, man, people are playing a lot of like among us and they're playing a lot of these games where it's like friends hanging out. And I wonder if that's kind of the, the, the way that people think about it when creating, or if this dev as a young man was just like, no, nah, I'm going to just make a game that I like, and it just happened to be this. Like, I don't know what the process was. Very I, curious. I also wonder, 
I guess like if if you've um, learned a lot about development and you like analyzing games and things like that, um, probably you'll pay attention to games that get big and also wonder to yourself, okay, so why did that game get big and is suddenly not mm -hmm. as big anymore? What was it about the gameplay loop that didn't last? And can mm -hmm. I fix it or can I do a different take on it that sort of alleviates that issue? Yeah. Right. <clears throat> I mean, I think yeah, that's that's back to like the iterative process is that, you know, you you have different games that slightly tackle it from a different approach and some of them hit for different reasons than others. Um I I think the modding scene in general is where I've always recommended people look if they're trying to get ahead of the curve and understand where like people's thinking is going because modders are able to iterate a lot faster than a, an actual dev and they're mm -hmm. able to like test out different ideas and you know you might have a completely different kind of fun with the same game in one mod and then that that kind of fun could be spun out and be its own thing altogether like the you know the right. skinwalker for example mod bit that we just did last night is like adds a whole other layer to the game that wasn't there before and like sure we we, we had talked about the dev ad adding that eventually in its own like as a monster that can take your audio and like that would play really well but like maybe that kind of mimicking mimicry concept on its own like that is the whole conceit for a game or for you know an iteration mm -hmm. of a game uh it might be a whole new genre so like i i always look to mods for for new game formats i think you know mm. look at gary's mod look at minecraft look at even fortnite you know how how all of these have yeah like you know dota coming from like uh you know warcraft 3 um all all big genre you know uh breakthroughs i believe personally have come from the modding scene in one way or another and then just like iterated and, and and polished and owned that experience into its own format and then someone mods that game and then makes a new format and so it's just kind of this process yeah. right yeah the only thing that i i love the idea of a game that like can use your own voice against you the only thing i can think of immediately is that somewhere there's some lawyer ready to tee up to like sue the yeah. hell out of that game <laughs> yeah. like how is it recording That's your true. audio all the time with like invasion of private, like you know that's gonna happen. So I'm just like, oh boy, there goes our fun. But who knows? <laughs> who knows? Yeah. Mm. That's actually that. Yeah, when you're playing the new Among Us VR, you cannot play it li like literally until you've get, like signed over your rights for them to use your voice. That's like one of the the waivers they make you sign before you even get in the game. And I remember that, that sketching us all out as we like logged into it. We're like, well, we said we we're going to stream this today. So I guess we're doing it. <laughs> That's so weird. What would they use it for? What's it used Don't for? Oh, no. Unclear. Who knows? Maybe we all exist as AIs in the Among Us universe. I don't really know. I don't like that. Speaking of Among Us, um, last night at the show, Saw our good boy Dantan, who is now one of the uh, Among Us uh, lead artists. I'm going to say the really? lead artist. The best artist there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously, um, he's the best artist there. Best artist. Shout out to Dan. And, um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, he was looking dapper as hell. And he's, like, living his best. I was so proud of that boy. I was like, Daniel. You little sweet boy. Daniel so, Daniel. Crushing it Daniel out there. Daniel Daniel. Yeah. So... Look at that. Yeah, he brought up Among Us. I was like, oh, I know a guy. Aww. So, good for him. Good for him. I'm glad. <sighs> yeah, now my Daniel Mullins Dan Tan game can't come true. Nothing ever goes my way. The Dan Dan game, if you will. Yeah, well, that's yeah. what the game is going to be called, Dan Dan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the story of Dan. Dan Dan, the story of Dan. Dan Dan, the story of Dan. Yep. Mm -hmm. So many Daniels like, in your life, Jesse. A lot of mics, too. A lot of mics. I feel like that's an, I feel like that's an American problem, not a not a Jesse problem. Oh, yeah. Those mics. So many, so many mics. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The worst. 
<laughs> so, Kraken, the homework section of this podcast is where you have a moment to pitch to us a show, game, movie, whatever, that you think everyone should take the time to watch, play, whatever. Originally, we specified that it should be something that maybe people wouldn't always give a good shot. Something that maybe takes a little bit of time before you're like, wait a second, this is very good. I'm just hoping it's something I've already seen so I don't have to watch it again. Let's go. I'm counting on you. We um, can give you examples of what we have said so far, if that would, if that would be helpful. No, I, I, I got one, actually. I, it was okay. the, the other thing I was going to recommend, which is a video game. I'm sorry, Jesse. It's, it's more than just a show or a movie. Hold on, um, hold on. But what is it, though? It's the FMV game I was bringing up called Not for Broadcast. I have played it, have loved it. Not really? for Broadcast is great. Okay, great. Such a fun game. Yes. Well, yes. I, I recommend not. it to anyone who, who hasn't. It. Yes. All right. So it's British as hell. It's uh, <laughs> it, you, you literally are a news person slash showrunner, like TV camera operator that's in a control room. Think like OBS, you're, you know, switching between cameras, you're like muting audio sources, um, and your job is literally to just, you know, play the news. And so there will be, you know, different interviews that are airing. Each of these are pre-recorded, you know, camera shots of, mm. you know, a, a news host or whoever it is. And your job as the showrunner is to cut between them. Someone says something, you're on, the camera's on them. You cut to someone's reaction. You cut back to the camera, and so forth. So it feels like you're 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 playing, you're making sure that things go smoothly. Like you're the producer. You're you're, you're sitting the in the back, just like or director of photography. I'm not sure what you would be, but you're yeah, you're absolutely correct. You go back and forth between camera A, camera B, but also there's the twist that while this is going on, there's a election I think happening, and there's, there's also yeah. a story that I don't want to get into because it's a spoiler. But there's all stuff happening, and then you can just also be bad at it. So a great example is there's one uh, reporter, like, on the scene. Like, I'm standing here, and a person, I think, strips behind them, or, like, something happens where, like, a dude gets nude. And you can either air all of it <laughs> or cut it because there's a – and so you can determine what gets broadcast. Mm, it's pretty yeah. amazing. There's, there's a lot of, like – having to cut around things and you get graded based on how well you do, but you could also intentionally mess it up. Like, you know, there will be an interview happening. There's literally one scene where uh, there's an interview happening. And then one of the other broadcasters or like the, the hosts who are, is not being interviewed is about to eat a sandwich. <laughs> and he's like preparing this perfect sandwich. And I would just like, when there was a quiet moment in the interview, just cut to him. And he's like <laughs> about to eat the sandwich and I cut away again. And like, it's, it's this like perfect comedic back and forth. But at the same time, it's not just goofs. It's a very funny game. It's like very British dry humor. But there's also, as Jesse was alluding to, this like, uh, this narrative about this election going on, about a new government and like a new like political party that gets elected. And as the story goes on, there's a bunch of time skips and we kind of see hmm. the different effects of this new political party coming into power. And a lot of uh, your, you know, you actually eventually run into this moral dilemma of like, as the news, is it my job to air everything? Is it my job to censor things that might be considered propaganda? Or like, you know, it, it, it becomes this very difficult moral dilemma um, while also remaining funny and in the end actually kind of tragic and, and like very heavy. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's, it's worth playing for anyone that likes narrative games. It's worth playing for people that like kind of funny games. FMV, it's, it's the best use of FMV, like the FMV medium I've honestly seen. Um, I think FMVs, I always assumed were just kind of like goofy, you know, choose your own adventure, go left or right. This one actually uses the like pre-recorded tapes in a way that makes sense and is like native to yeah. the actual job, which is the, the show running producing side of, of TV. Right. That sounds there's really also, fun. Yeah. It looks great. Yeah. There's also like, um, 
little – I don't know if it's dependent on difficulty. But there's little stressors in it where it's like, okay, so the power went out during this thing. Or you have to turn on this switch or keep this thing going. So it's more than just that, mm. than like doing the show. But I, again, I don't know if that's based on – difficulty where it's like you, okay you there's gonna be a lot more off. things going wrong i yeah. i turned off some of the more annoying ones so i could focus on the the story and like mm, funny bits right. but yeah there's there's a bunch of stuff it, it's kind of like almost uh five nights at freddy's where you have different like things that are constantly requiring your attention and it's not like jump scares they're more like i need to make sure the broadcast goes well and like you know shit's happening at the same time you have to load up ads it reminded mm. me of when i was a college dj <laughs> mm -hmm. like, yeah. it has the exact same i was like all right uh, while i'm playing the music i'm also loading up ads and then i have to like hit the times and i can see the counter timing you know like the timer counting down i can see all the different things it's it's a yeah kraken's right it's a good game it's very fun and apparently there's new dlc coming out next year which i think is awesome that they're still working on that's the game. awesome it, you wouldn't have expected it but yeah it's yep. it's coming along amazing yeah. yeah. Well, that's so you got, now you have. That's the homework from Craig. We have our first game. Our first game. You have homework. three assignments, Dodger. How are you doing? You catching up? Nope. <laughs> I have to. I have to watch five episodes of Ted Lasso. Five episodes yep. of Black Sails. Yep. Uh, five episodes of Family Feud. Even though I've seen hundreds of them. Nope. We gotta watch five more. And five is a lot of episodes. This is a lot of homework. It's because again, the original pitch was like a show that. If if you give it a few episodes, you'll be completely hooked on it. So the five episode thing happened, and now yeah. we've got a game, not for broadcast, which a bunch of people are saying in chat is a game I would adore. So it's like eight hours, but I I do think you would like it. Oh, and that's nothing. Yeah. Yeah, and eight hours for the story. You can also last thing I'll mention about it, um, because there's so much footage, and you're cutting around for the gameplay. You can go back uh, and both rewatch the broadcast that you aired. Like it saves it as as its own video, so you can see it's really funny. each of your cuts, and you're like, <laughs> "Oh, nailed that one." Or nice. if you missed something in the narrative and you wanted to see what they actually said when the camera goes off of them, there is another screen for that where you can watch the full unedited take mm -hmm. of whatever their camera was doing. So you know, if like one of the the hosts is like right. trash talking the political party when they're not aired. You can go back and watch that and get that side of the story that you missed. Oh my God. I forgot the best part of the game is the fake sport. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Dodger, imagine <laughs> being in the broadcast booth okay. for a sporting event, but you don't know the rules. And the <laughs> rules keep changing on the fly and you have to broadcast the event Amazing. to people. It is incredible it might be one of my favorite things in it, a game it is maybe the best bit yeah it's like someone will go it, it, yeah everyone it's like calvin ball <laughs> yeah but it's all very physical and they're literally making it up as they go and constantly faking you out intentionally because they know you don't know what they're about to do next and <laughs> on rewatching it the the tv host like interviewer dude that's on the scene with you that's shout casting the thing also doesn't know what's going on. Like the actor <laughs> so himself good. doesn't know what's going on. Cause at times he will say, That's what amazing. a great play. But the, the sports dudes like, Oh, I messed up. And, like, <laughs> and then you as the editors are like, I have no idea like where to focus on this. Oh, like, it's yeah, really so amazing. So funny. Yeah. That sounds really fun. You'd love it. Yeah. Um, amazing. Thank you for that homework. Yeah. Anytime. <laughs> you were that kid, weren't you? Thank you for that homework. No. <laughs> uh, I had detention all the time because I never did my homework. Ooh. You? Me. No. I started faking I never... tummy aches so that I could go home instead of going to detention. I never did my homework, I but I was really so sly often. about it. <laughs> I never got detention. Not once. I was just really good I got at detention. Talking my way out of things. A lot. A lot. You guys are a bad influence much as, on me. Not as much as Dodger. I never had to be like, my stomach hurts. I can't stay after school. <laughs> yeah. I was like, if they I'd send me it. home because I'm sick, what? Are they going to make me come back and do detention? No. And the school policy was that if you missed 
detention, they would put you on the list for the next day, but they always forgot. Ah, clever. <laughs> so. <laughs> How do they let, they let you just scoot on through? Me, not so much. They, like, went out of their way to be like, Cox, detention <laughs> now. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, jeez. I, All I was doing was try to make people laugh. They'd be like, no one thought it was funny. Let's go. I'm like, oh. You know. I, I managed to talk my way out of doing a mandatory after-school sport by saying, I will walk to the nearby bank and take a picture of the time to prove that I took that it was today. And I will walk back and show you. And then I can go home, right? And they say, all right, fine. So what? I literally got out of what? doing sports what? just because I proved that I walked down the street and came back. Yeah, I was that guy. What? <laughs> and then they didn't even care to check anymore because it was like, I mean, once I did it a few times. Where did the like, two of you go to school? How come my school was like uh, saved by the bell where everyone knew everyone and everyone's everyone's been all teachers were like, caught. you guys were like, fell through the cracks, baby. <laughs> The teachers uh, loved me. I was just the sweet little kid that, you know. I went to school in the middle of the woods. It was a K through 12 school that had 100 people in it. My teacher was a rabbit. <gasps> Our vice principal's name was Dick Large. It's, that's a really good. No way. <laughs> that was, that sounds fun. That sounds yeah. like a fun school. Yeah. I didn't know why that was funny until I got a little bit older. And then I was like, oh, yeah. that's why everybody thinks that's funny. Those Anyways. parents had to have a sense of humor. Yeah. Now I'm just picturing your school is like a clearing in a forest. And all your classmates, it was like you with little hobbit clothes on. And all your classmates were the creatures of the forest. Yeah. And you were, but, but then, you know, like your teacher was a deer. But then, like, if shit got rough, Dick Large would just come out of the forest with an axe. Like, oh, it calm was, down, kids. It was a little bit Rusty Lake-ish, yeah. Yeah, he'd be like, calm down, kids. It's me, Dick Large, your principal. <laughs> I'm going to go back in the woods now, but if I hear you chirping too loud, I'm going to come chirping. back with my axe. <laughs> yeah, because your fellow classmates were birds. Oh, yeah, of course. Naturally. Naturally. Right. Because yeah. you grew up you grew up in the woods Wait, with Dumbo? the woodland critters. Yeah. <laughs> like in Dumbo? <laughs> like in Dumbo? <laughs> Just like in Dumbo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We need it. Okay. All right, with that callback. <laughs> Thank you for having me, guys. This was Thank a lot of fun. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, tell everybody yeah. where they can find you and what you're going to be up to this week. Um, I'm Kraken. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Kraken or YouTube Kraken2. Uh, this week, I am, let's see, I'm playing Rogue Trader later today. And gosh, gosh, man, I don't know, a bunch of other stuff for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> I, I'm kind of making it up as I go, I'll be honest. But uh, a lot of lethal company lately. And um, F and B games, I guess, when I don't have anything else to do. So, yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. It was very yeah, fun. Thank you. Um, for uh, well, for the VOD viewers, you won't you won't be here for this immediately. But um, Jesse and I and Crendor and Octo are going to be playing some Lethal Company, uh, and I'm concerned that potentially the other three people involved have never played this game. <laughs> Um, but I'm not concerned. It'll be great. Yeah, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be super will fun. just I'm walk even... into the maw of monsters constantly. It'll be good. It'll be great. I'm excited to watch. Yeah, I love <laughs> watching it for the first time. It's gonna be great. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, that's gonna be happening. Uh, probably in like ten minutes or so, something like that. Give us give us time to stretch our leggies and get a drink. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you all very much for watching Geek Enders. Uh, we'll be back next Friday with a new guest. Same bat time, Ooh. same bat channel. As always, Bye. the VODs do not exist here. They exist exclusively on youtube.com slash Cox. So go there if you would like to watch this episode later or any of the last episodes or like tester episodes that we did. Um, and have a fantastic weekend. Thank you I'm working on getting it on the podcast form. Chill out, everyone. Everyone's bugging me. Where's the audio only version? I'm working on it. I want to listen to it wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm What's working, going I'm on? Working. I'm, I'm working, working on, on it. it. I'm working here. Everybody say bye. Yeah, bye. bye. See you later. Bye. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.
Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek in this podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger. What up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the geek and this are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you all beat. So take a second, grab a drink and vibe while we catch you up in just a matter of time on gaming. Comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt.